Okay. Okay. Well, thanks for joining us at the Clive Barker Podcast. In episode 296, we're returning to the Dungeons and Dragons game, Jericho Squad 77. Um, so where we last left off, uh, Musette Aya, a seer kind performed a uh, seer kind performer uh, from the Fugue transferred to Squad 77, uh, where new landscapes and adventure awaited her. Her first mission was to navigate through the sprawling and unfamiliar city of Isordorex and pick up the newest agent, uh, Drovo Dovir. Uh, Musette met Drovo and his brother, Chur Dovir, a Uradimek sway worker played by Jose. That's me. And uh, in the library of the Uradimek. Uh, Arcanum, but they were ambushed by cultists led by a Nullianak. Uh, Drovo was captured and Churdovir and Musette barely escaped, dodging bandits on their way back. After the destruction of Midian, after the unraveling of the fugue, after the fall of the unbeheld and the reconciliation of the five dominions, the Jericho organization has expanded and spread itself thin, guarding the breaches and investigating anything that comes through. This Dungeons and Dragons game is the story of one of those teams. Let's begin. So in the uh, in the forest of Midian, in the, in the uh, in the well in the in the broken down uh, ghost town of Midian, in a log cabin, in the basement, uh, Squad Forty Three is having breakfast. So we have uh, Zoe Mason. If you want to describe your character, I am Zoe. I am a descendant of a goddess uh, with resurrection powers, generally. And um, I was basically called to Midian by Babette in a vision, not realizing that I was also a night breed because I had been raised among humans. Wow. All right. And uh, Ralph. Hello. Ralph is a lizard man night breed that was born during the fall of Midian. Also at the table is a uh, fiddler Krustoff. And uh, he's he's a human. Um, he's typically pretty grumpy. He hates the station that he's in. He doesn't mm -hmm. he doesn't particularly care for the rest of the people there. Uh, Barclay, another human, uh, and he's he's got like he's a he's a um, he's he's got a handlebar mustache. And there's uh, Wembley, who is a, a a small like a three foot tall um, uh, tree frog type guy he's also a night breed and clarissa is a, a cat person also a night breed obviously mm -hmm. uh, so everybody's having breakfast and uh barclay goes okay it's time to read out the assignments for who's going out to the to the uh, graveyard today and what you guys know is that uh this is you've been here for months and the duty has always been everybody switches off um just poking out you've 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 separated the the graveyard into quadrants you're searching it looking for um looking for entrances or artifacts um eventually when everything valuable or er everything that that uh can be used to to uh demonstrate the existence of the night breed is gone then you'll probably the jericho organization is going to blow up the rest of the cemetery and bury it but uh, until that happens, it's your job to search it. And it has not been a very, uh, very easy challenge. And you guys have found almost nothing uh, up to this point. Most of the doors are blocked. And um, you don't have any heavy equipment or anything because you don't want to draw a lot of attention to yourselves. Okay, so um, 
at this point to um, and Barclay says, okay, so the assignments today, we've got Zoe, Ralph, and um, Fiddler. And Fiddler says, God damn it. He was kind of hoping that he'd get to stay home. He says, all right, well, give me the thing. And so he gets handed a a kind of a little box with a button and a and a, a case over the button and you guys know that this is a kind of a doomsday device so if any if anything ever happens to the um if your if your location is compromised then then the button gets pushed and and you're not exactly sure what happens but that's what it's for so it's like a toddler in a box <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> Press the button. You never know what's going to happen, but it's going to right. be today. <laughs> yeah. So, um, and the the uh, the grungs, the 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 uh, Wembley, the the little frog guy. He says, "Oh man, I wanted to go." And Barclay tells him, "Hey, no, sorry, Kermit." <laughs> <laughs> Barclay says, "Well." You know, if you watch the Muppet Show, who do you think was in charge? Miss Piggy. <laughs> yeah, Miss Piggy. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Obviously, Miss Piggy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, if you you guys can head out, uh, unless there's anything else you want to do here first. After you finish breakfast. I think everybody's ready to go out. <laughs> okay. You're not there. Yeah. All right. So um, we'll switch over to Jonathan. All right. So Jonathan, uh, you have been following this group of uh, sort of loud hillbilly motorcycle types, um, gun, gun fanatics, uh, because Not mainly, the yeah, they mainly <laughs> because they, they litter a lot. <laughs> and you especially follow this guy, uh, named Earl. Uh, they call him boy RD because he keeps bringing them food and they don't like it. And so they just dump it. So you're He's hoping to be my best friend. <laughs> yeah. So you're hoping <laughs> That you can get something out of him. And uh, you follow them to a disheveled old uh, graveyard. It looks defunct. Not only does it look defunct, but it looks like somebody like destroyed it. Um, it's kind of grown over since then, but like there's tombstones are toppled over and mausoleums are crushed. Um, there's some burnt trees and things. So anyway, you're, the, you, you, uh, you see that, that uh, Earl... Let's see. Um, and so the, the Earl is talking to Loretta and Loretta says, and Earl says to her, why, Loretta, why can't we keep the sons of the free? It was good enough for our parents. And she says, the new name's important. We took it first. We're the Aboriginal children. Damn it, boy RD, just watch the goddamn graveyard for us and make sure the spookies don't come sneak up on us. And he's, I'm sorry, this text is really small. I need to get younger eyes. <laughs> Buy my glasses. Yeah. <laughs> this is the Clive Barker podcast. We could just go get some younger eyes. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Perception plus two. Put on your glasses. Whoa, shoot. <laughs> well, so I'm probably um, just flying at a safe distance and keeping okay. an eye on with. Uh, okay, so you're flying up above? Yeah, you know, I'm circling like a normal seagull. I'm, I'm looking for breakfast too, and I'm I'm kind of more, the worse the better. Yeah. So er, Earl says, "I'm sick of the shit details, and stop calling me that. I just bought spaghettios one time." Oh, I am uh, definitely interested. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he says, "Earl, if you see something scary, just hide and call us. Come meet up with us. Just keep an eye out. We're going to go root out these freaks where they live." So. Um, she and and the uh, and four other people uh, get up, get into their cars, and they leave, and they leave Earl behind, and he's sitting up against a tombstone or up against a mausoleum, and he's 
uh, he starts digging stuff out of his bag. So you see, he's got uh, he's got a peanut butter jar uh, and a jelly jar and some Wonder Bread. I'm fearful. And he's starting to uh, he, he's starting to assemble uh, peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. And when he uh, when he opens up the peanut butter jar, it's empty. And he goes, God damn it! And he throws the peanut butter jar over his shoulder, and uh, and and he goes, Well, I guess we're making jelly sandwiches. <laughs> Mm-hmm. All right, I'll do the the seagull swoop over like the thrown trash until I realize it's empty. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> he he. Um, are there any unattended pieces of bread? Uh, may, may make a perception check. Mm-hmm. Oh wow, I'm a little groggy. Okay. Um. So I got six. Six? No, you you don't you don't see anything yet. Are you circling over his head? Yeah, I'll I'll just start doing the obnoxious seagull circuit. Okay. And, uh, a car okay. every third revolution. He he train. says he says, damn it! Why is this seagull always following me everywhere I go? And he pulls out his shotgun and starts aiming it at you. Oh, well, that escalated quickly. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I would just like to back off to okay. Well, and uh, and just as he's, he's aiming his shotgun at you, he goes, "Oh, damn it!" And uh, he, you notice that even with your horrible six perception, you <laughs> notice that uh, a metal centipede had been crawling along the upper part of the tomb, and it mm-hmm. bit him on the head. So he's kind of fallen down. He he fired at it, and he fell down and dropped his shotgun, and he's kind of sitting there, shaking. Metal centipede. Yeah, wow. like how big? A couple of inches? A no, no, off? it's it's giant. So it's it's uh it's well giant for a centipede. So it's probably like it's about three feet long. Whoa! Yeah, okay, it's so uh it looks made, like it's made out of steel. It's got caliper legs. Is it a nightbreed? What's that, Brent? Um. Oh, I said so. Yeah, definitely not edible. Um, no, I, no, you'd I probably have to work really hard to, to eat straight it. Straight over here from Calgary, and I ha- haven't been in town too long, so I probably have never seen anything like this in Midian before, correct? Uh, no, no, you haven't. In fact, this is the first time that they went out here that you since you've started following these guys. Uh, okay. Um, well, I guess first order of business is to actually go grab that piece of bread I was uh, talking about. And as I'm wolfing it down into my okay. crop, I'll hop okay. over. You're trying to and... keep a safe safe distance from the, the creature? Oh, yeah, absolutely. And then okay. keep a safe different distance from um, Ed. And then I guess just try to go see what's wrong with him. Okay. Earl? Earl, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, um, so we'll go back to uh, Chur and Musette. Um, so you guys had your breakfast, um, and uh, you, you're you're awake and you're feeling better after the the battles, for, um, and uh, and you you find um, Bentley uh, comes out to you and he says, "Hey, I think that uh, I think that maybe we can we can get the people from Squad Forty Three to help you." That's wonderful. Um, when do we get to meet them? Well, uh, let, let just a second. He says, "I'll I'll show you." And he and so there's a he he pulls out this computer. It looks like um well, Musette would recognize that this is actually a pretty old computer. Um, it's beige. It's like got the keyboard built in. Uh, and he he loads it up. He says, "You know the the." The fifth dominion works with this weird uh, star that the the planet rotates around a star instead of normal like us and having a comet go around the planet. So th- their time is their time is different from ours and it's always changing. So you can't predict it. And I asked them to send me a, a mathematician to help me figure out when people are coming and when they're not. But instead, they sent me this computer, and they sent me a musician. 
Okay, well, but why I, are we complaining about a musician? Math is, I mean, music is very math related. Well, they still send me a computer, so I've got a program that can track who, um, that can track what time people are going to arrive based on the time that it's it is there, and it it calculates the the rotation of the of their of their planet around the sun versus the rotation of our comet. And so he 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 boots up his Amiga 500, and it's got a blue uh, a blue graphical universe uh, graphical user interface with a with white background and orange highlights. And he loads it up. He says, "Okay, they're going to be here at 9:37 a.m." Okay, so Squad 43 then. Yes, they'll be coming here to help. Um, I requested help and. From what I heard, they don't have a lot going on. They're digging up a graveyard or something. Okay. Um, so we'll what, just what... wait here for them to show up. Okay. Um, so we'll go back to Ralph and uh, Zoe. So you walked over. Um, in the past, you had brought. You guys do have a uh, have a like a suburban kind of a thing, but that you keep in. And there's another cabin that's disguised as a, it's a garage, but it's disguised as a cabin. The wall kind of folds up, and you can drive out of there. Um, but that was in the days when you thought you were going to get stuff, and that you needed the car to haul it around. Um, you kind of got tired of of doing that when you weren't finding anything, so you just started walking. And it's not that far. It's about 100 yards to the cemetery. So um, as you walk there, uh, make a perception check. Perception check. Yeah. It's very bleak. Not much going on. And I can have, uh, I'll have Fiddler do his perception check also. Wow. Okay, so what did you get, Ralph and Zoe? I got a three. <laughs> Which okay. one were they supposed to roll? I'm, I'm clueless. You roll a 20 sided <laughs> die and really... add your perception bonus to it. Oh, okay. I, add the bonus to it? Okay. Yeah. That's what I screwed up then. I got a rock. I know. <laughs> it's still probably not high. I mean, I guess it's really foggy in the graveyard this morning. You so buy what did that? You get? What did you guys get? I rolled I a 10. Okay. I rolled a 10 and my perception uh, is plus five. Okay, so it's 15 then? Yeah. Okay. I rolled a three and my perception is plus three. So six. Yeah. Okay. It's easier for me if you guys can just tell me the, the number after you do the math. Okay. Okay, so... Um, a six and a, so with a 15 you do notice uh ralph you're the first one to see that there is a um a man sort of twitching on the ground and you see um uh there's a metal centipede near his body a big one and that would be normally scary but having uh spent a little time as a child in midian you recognize this and you had heard that there were a uh, hundred years ago, there were a lot of these things. They're kind of caretakers of Midian. Uh, but by the end, there was only one left. Uh, this one, his name is Riff. Riff the Metal Centipede. Yeah. So uh, Riff's been alone for, uh, how long has Riff been alone for? Yeah, 30 years. 30 years, wow. So do you uh, do you approach them? And there's also a seagull that's rooting around in in their well, stuff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I kind of want to go and in, investigate uh, this little metal centipede before a seagull mistakes it for food. <laughs> okay. So you walk up to it, and it speaks to you in a language that you haven't heard in a long time. It speaks to you in Midian common. Uh, it's lying there. It's kind of lying there, uh, split open a little bit, and it's bleeding. So they're, they're, these things are, are cybernetic. So they have a metal uh, carapace, but inside they have uh, guts. 
Ooh. And it says it says in 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 uh, Midian uh, language it says help me. Um, man, let me look at. Well, I really can't help him. Sanitize dodge. Well, other than help. So uh, I'm gonna, you know, go ahead and pick this little guy up. Okay, and Zoe, and, you you see this also now. I mean, obviously, if you yeah, since bring, Ralph's kind of gotten involved, and Fiddler goes, "What the hell's going on?" <laughs> Um, hmm. we can't eat it. <laughs> no, we can't eat it. Um, hmm. He says, "Who is this guy?" And he po he points at the. He just turned into Bentley for a second there. He says, "Who is this guy?" <laughs> Are we trying to see whether or not, like something, other than this metal um, centipede is? in the general area i mean should i be on the lookout for that uh you can decide well, what do you want to do is oh. is my guidance spell basically something that would do that i mean should uh, I? guidance gives uh gives you or or your friends a, um a d4 i think on on your rolls so if you're making some kind of a check or a saving throw or so or yeah if you're doing some kind of a like a perception check or you want to you want to look at investigate something you can do guidance and it gives them a little bit of extra they can roll a d4 in addition to their 20 and they can get a higher score i think i'm gonna do that guidance on yeah who? um hmm. let's see i gotta touch one willing creature who's yeah. willing and, and typically <laughs> when you do it it's because they're trying to do something Oh, hmm. So right now, Ralph, you're picking up the the centipede. Oh yeah, I'm gonna pick up uh, what Riff 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 is. Yeah, his name? Riff. My new uh, cybernetic BFF, Riff. Yeah. But he's dying. Y yeah, he's. Well, hurt. maybe I should do. You know what? I'll, I'll do cure wounds. Okay. That guts. I, I can do All that. All right. I'm interested. Okay, so uh, roll um, roll your healing, and then you click on the little on the on the spells or on you you click cast and that'll that'll mark off that spell slot okay and it should be a d8 plus something 1d8 plus something it says 1d8 plus ah let me close this out hang on i'll get up there 1d8 plus three okay yeah, yeah i'm rolling i'm rolling eight so. Oh wow! So he, that's eleven. So he's he uh, his wounds close up and his the metal kind of covers back up over his body, and he's healed. Yay! And he he looks up at you and he's really Aww. happy, and uh, he 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 kind of holds up a a, a leg, and and uh, and he says he says to Ralph, uh, tell her to wait, and he um he scurries over to the peanut butter jar and he grabs it. And he scurries back down into, he goes, he scurries into the, the uh, mausoleum and goes down for a little bit. And you hear some scraping noises and then he comes back and he, he, he shoves the uh, peanut butter jar over to you and it's full of like some kind of dirt with chunks in it. Definitely not peanut butter though. Yeah, well, no, it not might peanut, be peanut butter. butter chunks mixed in with whatever dirt this is. So he pushes that over to Zoe. Okay. And and then and then he goes to um and do you want to look at it or investigate it? Or, or yeah. you can make a perception check if you want to look closer at it. Okay, so I roll my 20. Yeah. And okay. add the perception bonus. Four plus three is seven. Okay. Yeah, I'm it's not a, doing well today. It's, it's a jar full of dirt. Okay, get the bad ones out of the way early. I yeah, think it works better. So then he he says to uh, he 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 looks at Ralph and he motions to him, and he says, "Ralph, is that yes. you?" Yes, Riff. Wow, you've grown up, and you've been decapitated. Dilapidated. Yes. <laughs> so, what's shaking? He got the jump on me, apparently. Who got the jump on you? This man here. I bit him, but he uh, he got a shot off, and he 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 shot me with his gun. Oh, the the twitching man. Yes. 
thought he was a tweaker. I poisoned um, him. It'll wear off soon, though. So you might want to, you guys might want to do something. Oh. Well, if I bite him, do you speculate that the poison will enter my body? You you want to bite him? <laughs> Seems like a good idea, but no, I think you'd be okay. But <laughs> you can you can bite him if you want. No, nah, let's be more dramatic about it. I'm gonna take my gun to his face. Okay, <gasps> you're gonna shoot him in the Why face. Not? Okay. <laughs> well, you, you don't have to roll anything for that. That just kills him. Bang! Speaker's <laughs> okay. dead. There goes Earl. Yeah. <laughs> All right. He says, uh, "Well, Ralph, follow me." And uh, he scurries under a under a, a a wall of a mausoleum entrance. Had kind of toppled over, and it's diagonal. And if you think that if you lie down, you could probably squeeze through it. Me? Yes. He he asked you to follow him. Oh, well, I can wiggle down there. I'm pretty certain. Okay. Make an athletics check. Hopefully okay. you guys don't roll. You don't roll like a two or something. Um, duck. Well, Ooh. I'm going to go explore my new breakfast. Okay. Um, yeah, and there is, <laughs> there is there um, is Wonder Bread and there's a, an open jar of jam and a knife on the dirt. I will straight up use a beige hand to make a jelly and brains sandwich. Okay, um, <laughs> jelly and brain. Oh, God. so um, Zoe, can you make a perception check to see if you notice that he, this this seagull is using magic? And then I I assumed I was I'm not able to speak Midian common, and so I saw him talking to the centipede in like a strange yeah. language I didn't yeah. know. Okay. Yeah, and, and if he didn't oh. translate, then Zoe and Fiddler don't know what's going on, what he was talking about either. My interest... Total of seven again. You got a seven? To total of seven again. Oh, to wow. Okay. I'm yeah, not so... having fun today. <laughs> yeah, you're still looking at your at your uh, peanut butter jar full of dirt. Um, it 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 does have some. It seems like black, and it's got chunks in it. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Just dive in. Yeah. So, That's not um... Nutella. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so uh, what did you, Joe? What did you roll for uh, on athletics? My, on my athletics, yeah. Sorry, I got um. Well, with my uh, with my bonus, it's a uh, five. <laughs> <laughs> so I got right. stuck. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're, you're you're try you well you you can manage to get your shoulders in there, and you are kind of stuck. So if anybody wants to help him, I'm just uh, filled with rage in this. Yeah. Underground, Fid underground. Fiddler says, Ralph, what the hell are you doing down in there? I was following my friend. He says, I don't know, understand what's going on. What did he say to you? Do you need help? He just said, follow him, man. And he seemed like a good idea. Nothing else is going on. I need help. Uh, do you want to do you want to come back out or do you want to want me to shove you forward? I would prefer someone to shove me forward. He says, all right, I'll try. Uh, so let's see. He's got, uh, he's going to push. <laughs> oh, so he got a natural 20 plus two. So he got, uh, he shoves you in and you kind of, uh, and, uh, he, it was a lot harder than he was expecting. And you kind of skid through the, the opening and there's almost room to stand up in here. You you can uh, you can kind of crawl on your hands and knees, or you can you can walk if you're crouched down. And uh, Riff is waiting for you there, and he he kind of signals for you to to keep following. And you start feeling uh you 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 feel in your mind uh that you need to be going this way. And you you hear the words "find me." Ooh. So uh, Riff goes uh, goes for a, a while, uh, a couple of minutes. You follow him, and then there's a drop off, and he crawls down, uh, down kind of a, a ledge. And you look down when you look down it, it's about ten feet down. So mm -hmm. you can climb down it, or you can like hang off it and and uh, and then drop. So that you could make an athletics or an acrobatics check, whichever is is bigger, whichever is higher. I mean. Uh to get to negotiate yourself down the 
character sucks. No, he doesn't. My character's <laughs> awesome. Okay. Um, Your character's level one. Character's yeah. level one. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Everything's hard at the at the beginning. All right. I got an, uh well, it's gonna be a twelve on okay. let's just do uh uh athletics again. Okay. Here we go. Um I wrote this all all this stuff down here somewhere. Oh, there we go. Uh, yeah, so you managed to climb down barely. You kind of scrambled a little bit. You started to lose your grip, but you made it down. And uh, you 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 walk down. You follow a riff for another five minutes, and you see uh, this. You see a skele the skeletal corpse of uh, of someone that you kind of recognize. It's uh, Lizzie B. Um, she's dressed in a robe, and there is a bundle. Um, that she's kind of fallen on top of. A bundle. Yeah, like it's 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 wrapped in in uh, burlap. It's huge. Well, that seems like something important. I probably should go check out. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, um, let's... If you move her off of it uh, and unwrap it, you'll find it's a it's a big, sort of mummified hand. Uh, you you recognize it as the hand of Baphomet, Ooh. and uh, the the that feeling of 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 being called is is more intense. The hand's calling to Ralph. Yeah. Talk to the hand. <laughs> Talk to the hand. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hand of Baphomet. Yeah. <laughs> so what do you want to do? What, what is thy bidding? <laughs> It says, find me. Find Baphomet? Find Midian. Heal me. Oh, man. Well, I only have Riff around to help me carry this thing. Yeah. So do you grab it? Well, yeah, I'll try to budget. Okay. okay. So w as soon as you grab it, it sort of scurries itself up or up onto your back and and grabs around uh, around your waist and your shoulders it's like a big backpack now ow <laughs> well that was that's unexpected you you feel kind of gonna... a, a, a <laughs> rush of of uh of power and, and you feel this connection to baphomet at this point Oof. I am so powerful. How will I ever get out of here, though? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, yeah, now you're bigger than you were before. I, I definitely can't <laughs> squeeze through the holes now. Yeah. Can I burst right. through the wall like the Kool-Aid man? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so you if uh, you you follow Riff back, and eventually you make your way back to the entrance, uh, where it is. It's a little bigger, um, and uh, you're wondering how you're going to squeeze through. And your friends are all waiting for you, or I mean, colleagues. If you, think, I guess. if you think about it, my body can't even move like it used to now. I probably can't yeah. bend all the way forward. Yeah, you're right. This is very hindering. Uh, I start shouting. Someone dig the hole bigger. Zoe, make the <laughs> hole bigger for me. <laughs> oh Lord. Grandma uh, says you got yourself in there. Why don't you get yourself? Well, I guess I helped. You need fine. You need help. You need a hand. Uh, <laughs> uh, Let me think one? here. How am I so, get out um, Fiddler says, "Hey, somebody help me out here!" And he starts, he starts trying to push the uh, the fallen over stone up so it's upright. Mm -hmm. And if somebody helps him, he'll get advantage on the strength check. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. So I'm stuck in the middle of nowhere. Are there any other places I can go check out down here? Uh, not really. I mean, you mm -hmm. if you want to explore more, you could, I guess. But you also had a time limit. Um, you need to be back at the back at the um, at the base by two o'clock. There was something you're supposed to help some other squad with something. Mm. And uh, is Riff still operational? Yeah, Riff is is uh, Riff's been following you back. Okay, so Riff's just gonna kick it on my shoulder then for a while. I'm gonna be okay. that guy. So, oh. d d 
um, Zoe, do you want to help uh, move the stone mm. <laughs> or Jonathan? Um, I, I was thinking about it. I might try. I can push five pounds. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's. Well, I'm looking at my thing here would with athletics. Yeah, yeah. athletics. Have... Well, but if I, you, I've if got if a plus help... zero on that. And I'm, if you, if you I'm help... afraid to roll. If you help uh, Fiddler, he rolls with advantage. So he rolls twice and picks, takes the higher number. So you don't have to roll anything. Okay. You just have to tell me if you're helping him or not. Yeah, I'll help him. Okay. All right. So he get wow. DM is rolling really high today. So that doesn't bode well for you guys. Damn. Uh, so he got a 19 plus two is 21. So, yep, he shoves that thing up and he goes, go! And he's holding it. He and Zoe together are holding this this uh, stone thing up so that you can crawl out of there. Great. And Riff sort of scampers ahead ahead of you, and goes through. Cool. And then uh, as soon as you're through, uh, he and Zoe let it go because it's super heavy. All right, so I just pull like... myself the rest out by brute force. Yeah. Sweet. I'm out. Okay. Fresh air. <laughs> and and so, I'll just finish my jelly and brain sandwich like watching this all unfold oh and then uh okay I, guess um, I'll speak. I don't really speak um yeah but so I you guys them hear a voice in sorry okay go ahead in a minor illusion and I just kind of want to like look at them and look at the jar and then have a kind of a Canadian accent inflected voice say hey. uh yeah a but uh, I take it that's not a jar of peanut butter, eh? So is this a, is this a an illusory voice? It's not your actual yeah, no, speaking. Okay, no, I, I don't do that. Right okay, <laughs> I sound like a seagull. <laughs> <laughs> so you you're so saying I'll, that in? I guess I would ask, yeah, like Zoe, in English, because mm -hmm. I th this has been quite the morning. You know, I've had quite the buffet. I don't know if they, I know they do dinner theater, but I, I caught like the brunch theater <laughs> in the graveyard. I saw some guy climb down and come back up with a hand. Guy get like, shot in the face. Yeah. Well, that's, I don't know. I hang out with these guys quite a bit. Like that happens. Yeah. Well, tip your waitress and try the veal. Yeah. I, you know. <laughs> so, so you see him putting brains from this guy on the, uh, on the, the sandwich, so make a constitution check. <laughs> Yuck. Okay. Well, let me see. Constitution check. Yeah. So you just yeah. roll your you roll 20 sided die and then you add your constitution bonus to it. Oh lord. Is that really I got low a one? Again? This is you're doing a twenty <laughs> okay. You're doing a 20 sided die, right? Yes. Okay. And I got a one. <laughs> okay, so you as soon as you see what he's doing, you throw up all over the ground. That's normal. <laughs> yeah. That's normal. <laughs> and um, so, Brant, can they tell that the voice is coming from you? No, it's just kind of, I, I would like general sound. You know, I, yeah. I kind of come from a point right in front of them. But I would, with body language and such, make it pretty odd. I mean, I'm not hiding the magical nature of my sandwich okay. making. I'm like making eye contact while smearing brains and jelly on bread. <laughs> with it with a semi-transparent human looking hand yeah and i just ask like i yeah. so i take it that's not peanut butter huh. and neither was that <laughs> no it was scrambled eggs <laughs> pink scrambled Ooh. eggs nice no what i what i threw up <laughs> ah, yeah yeah <laughs> Some additional brains <laughs> with ketchup. <laughs> <laughs> I like Fiddler. mine with salsa. But Fiddler says, "What the hell is what's going on here?" He says, "Frank, what what is that on your back? What is that?" And he back. points at Ralph. Uh, he points at Riff. He says, "And what's that?" And he points at the seagull. And it, and what's going on with this? <laughs> I, I suppose, I guess I'll make introductions. My name is Jonathan. Um, I take it, you can tell I am not 
the traditional seagull, but from the looks of you, it's just not the traditional group. Um, so I thought I would uh, reveal myself, see if you were interesting. I meet very few interesting people in my long life. Yeah. You're a bird. <laughs> and you're a lizard with a hand on your back. Am I the strange one? <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> so um, Fiddler look, looks at the, uh, he says, so how, you're the first talking seagull I've ever run across. How is it that you can talk? Are you from Midian? No, I'm, uh, I just winter here. Usually I winter in Calgary. All right, summer in Calgary, winter in Baja. Um, I have been doing it for 30 years now. Um, I, in fact, am also the only talking seagull I've ever met. And it just slowly developed. Um, I found myself different one day than the other seagulls. I can't really explain it. Um, but I started to overhear people and understand that there was more going on than most of us animals had realized. Um, so I took in with... Uh, you know, a tourist in Baja, somebody with a timeshare. And uh, eventually I trusted him enough after digging through his trash for a couple months that I tried to speak to him. And he seemed to take an interest and uh, taught me to read and write and things of that nature. We stayed there about a year. And uh, then he named me Jonathan Livingston. And uh, he thought it was a joke. I, I, I hate the name, but I love the man, so I keep it. That book, <laughs> that, ugh, and I just kind of want to fluff feathers. It's like, that, that, that man never met a seagull in his life. And there's billions of us. How could you never meet a seagull? Like, did he <laughs> just get huffy? <laughs> but uh, I have been following this Earl around for a while. I don't know what your interest is with him, but him and a group of ne'er do wells, um, litterers mostly, and you know, drug runners and murderers and thieves, uh, are you know based around this town. And I just I've been kind of following around for a while. So if you have any interest in them, I could likely take you to them. What I didn't know. Huh? Go ahead. I didn't know you were investigating Earl, and he was just there, like he was hurting riff and riff seemed like a pretty chill guy so i was just finishing the job <laughs> what the hell what were he what was he doing here what was he doing here you followed earl all the way here uh yeah they they were i i was more concerned with breakfast but they were talking about um it seemed they were worried that uh, there were some sort of guardians of this place. Some of them stormed off um, in a huff. Uh, I forget specifically the details. <laughs> uh, Fiddler says, I think we'd better go. If they, if they, fo if they followed us here, they might have followed us home. Hmm. Good point. He says, come on, let, let's go. Uh, Jonathan, if you want to come with us, you can. Um, are they traveling by car? We walked. Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll fly. <laughs> okay. And I guess I'll, you know, yeah, change radius to real close and talk to him every once in a while and then okay. swoop off and kind of keep an eye out on the surrounding area for extra snacks and points of interest. Fiddler says, "Let's uh, let's get, come around from by way of the garage and uh, and scope out what's going on and try to be sneaky." So he's going to he's going to try to be sneaky. Uh, do you guys also want to try to? Um, you can make a stealth roll if you want to try to be quiet uh, coming back up to the to the cabin. Uh, Zoe and Ralph. Yeah. Uh, okay. And. Um, and Riff is staying behind, unless you guys want to try to talk to him. Uh, I don't, I don't, I, I mean, Riff could tag along if he wants, but if he's staying behind, that's, that's, he, he can do what he do. Okay. All right. <laughs> yeah. It, 
Go ahead. Catalina is going to need to load roll 20. She hasn't launched in yet. Yay. All right. So you guys, um, oh, yeah, make your stealth rolls. And I'm, I'm so the stealth is oh. the second to last skill on there. Whoa. So Fiddler did terrible, even though he has a really high stealth bonus. He got an 11. I'm just going to jump into a hole. Okay. My, stealth, my stealth bonus is plus two, and I rolled a one again. Okay. So so just as, uh, just so as, Zoe, just, just as Zoe was uh, trying to sneak up on the garage, she, she tripped on the drain pipe. And uh, and and just ah, and fell down. <laughs> and, and you, you you hear voices going, "What was that?" And Fiddler says, "Hold on, hold on. Let me go. Let me go check this out. You guys wait here." Uh, so let's see. I'm going to start sharing the screen here with the map. So you guys, just one thing to keep in mind: with the weird thing that we ran into with uh, with our last game is that you'll want to click on the one that that I'm screen sharing instead of your own, and that doesn't work. It won't. You won't be able to control your characters and stuff with that one. Okay. So let's see here. Can I? Where I can. I? So mm -hmm. he walks up here, and he says, "Hey." This is my property. What the hell are you doing here? And he points his rifle at them. And the, the one in the middle, uh, a woman, she also has as kind of an assault rifle type weapon. And all three of them have their have their weapons trained on him. And she says, we've been following you guys and we think you're harboring some freaks. And inside, we're interviewing. Uh, we, we, there, you act like your government, but you don't. But what kind of government would uh, would would uh, harbor freaks? So we're doing some interviews inside. We're we're interviewing for your jobs. We'll see you here in a minute if there are any openings. Hmm. And he says, "You and everybody else inside needs to get out now." Or I'm going to start firing. Okay. And a pretty tense 30 seconds or so go, go by. Everybody's got their guns trained on each other. And then you hear uh, from inside of the house, you hear blam, 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 three gunshots. Uh -oh. And uh, and at that point, um, Fiddler fires his gun and the three of them fire back. Uh, and um, everybody roll for initiative. And then I'll figure out what happened to Fiddler and those guys. Ooh, I just rolled a 20. I hope that's not the only... <laughs> not, not totally a waste, I guess. Initiative. Yeah. That would be 24. So you, you, uh, you roll the 20-sided die and you add the initiative bonus, which is right in the middle, top middle of the... right next to armor class there. So Fiddler got a 25. So what did you, Brant, you got a total of 20? 24. 24? I rolled a 20. Oh, wow. Nice. Hope I didn't waste it. Okay. Where did you say initiative is? Yeah. Uh, so it's, it's in the top middle. Uh, it says initiative. It's right next to the armor, to the left of the armor class. Oh, it's right there. Yeah. So you just roll the 20 and roll. add that bonus to it. Okay. Uh, Ralph has 11. Okay. And um, Zoe? I have a total of I'm three. Not sure. okay. Three? Maybe really? Hour. I got a one and I have a plus two initiative. Whoa, man. 
I, I hope told you got today all, is not working out for me. I hope you got all that out of the out of your system now. God, I hope so. Okay, Put and orphan um, around. <laughs> and uh, so so Chur and Musette, uh, you guys back at the back in the in the second Dominion. Yeah. The time has come and gone when the uh, when they were supposed to arrive, and and uh, Bentley says. Hey, they were supposed to be here. This is a very precise thing that we do. And if they're not showing up, something's wrong. Uh, um, is there any way we can go to help them? Yes, yes, just a second. And he he, uh, he grabs a Polaroid camera. He takes a picture of Chur with it and he uh, <laughs> shakes it and puts it down. And then he takes a Polaroid picture of, of uh, Musette and shakes that and puts it down. He says, this is, uh, this will help me remember so I can contact you. Okay. And he, he opens up a book and puts, and puts tapes those pictures into the book uh, uh, next to a profile of you guys that he had started in the morning. Hmm. And, uh, and then he turns this, uh, he, he, this is a three ring binder and he turns uh, to a picture that says, uh, to a page that says squad 43 and it shows a picture of an arrangement of tiles on the uh, on the the express transport. Ooh, he says okay. we need to make the tiles look like this to get over there. Mm -hmm. um, so you can kind of lift the tiles out and and uh, rearrange them the, the, so that the runes match what's in the uh, in the picture. Okay, so I, I grab the little stones and I uh, I, okay. I put them in the pattern. Okay. To because I'm make, familiar with these transports. Make an arcana check, and you can do it with advantage because Bentley is helping you. Okay, arcana check. Yeah, and so that and is. so that means you get to roll twice and take the higher number. Uh, 20 sided? Yeah. Okay, roll twice. I got an eight, and now I've got an 18. Okay, 18. Okay. So 18 plus, plus five. That's okay, 20. wow. Yeah, you uh, you put it together no problem, and you feel pretty confident that this is going to work. Awesome. He says uh, he says when there's two of you, it's best to hold hands when you go through. Okay. Okay, so you step into the transport, and he says, "I'm I've got to stay back here and and uh, mind the shop. Uh, hopefully, everything is okay." All right. And uh, as you hold hands, uh, you guys need to make and and you feel. You start to feel your bodies um, come apart and become your glyphs, mm -hmm. and uh, and as that happens, um, make a, make a charisma check, and you can do that with, if you want. Uh, Musette can do it with advantage because Musette just recently went through this, and also she has a higher charisma score. So if she okay. does it, you guys have a better chance. Okay. So twice and then plus the, okay. Yeah, roll, you roll twice oh. and take the higher number roll and then it. add your charisma uh, saving throw actually. So that's in down in the saving throws section on the left. I got a nine minus one, that's an eight. But uh, she's rolling for you. Okay, gotcha. Uh, oh, I got, a, I got an 18 and I got a 20. So Whoops. 20 and then okay. uh, it's, uh, I guess it's the plus two, right? So you manage to you manage to hold together, and as you go through the express, there's nothing nothing in inside the Inovo that's bothering you. So you you make it all the way through, and um, right at the very end, you see coming towards you uh, as you're approaching the express in the Fifth Dominion. There's some kind of furniture on top of the transport. Uh, so make a dexterity, uh, make a dexterity saving throw to, to dodge this. It, it looks like a breakfast table. <laughs> dexterity. Yeah. Okay. okay so we both uh, do. I got a 12 plus two. That's a 14. Okay. I got a 19 total. Okay. Um, Use yeah. So with a, with a 14 and a 19, you're able to kind of jump up in the air and, uh, and you, you jump over the table. And end up on the to the left of it there, or to the yeah, as you, if you look at the map there. All right, look at us. The guy on the floor. That's okay. a swanking looking headquarters. Cool. Yeah, and as you look around, um, and, and uh, as you look around, what you see is um, is a. Uh, it's kind of similar to your headquarters, uh, but the, it's also subterranean. It looks like it's in a basement. 
and um and but it's not it doesn't look like it's carved out by magic it does not like bigger on the inside like your place is it looks like it's really carved out of the dirt like they took a basement of a place and dug it bigger out of the out of the ground Primitive. um so but you spent uh you guys spent the the first round going through the innovo so we'll go back to the uh to the rest of the group here uh oh and you guys also need to roll your initiative so we know what order you're going in I got 20. 20. Did you, was it a natural 20 or you got 20 yeah. plus something? Oh, uh, just a natural 20. Was I supposed to plus anything? Yeah, add your initiative bonus also. Oh, uh, then 22. Wow. All right. And sure, Dovir. Hmm. What did you get for initiative? Sure, Devere is muted. Oh. Hello, I got a 16 okay. plus. Let me check where, what's my initiative here. Where is that? <clears throat> initiative. Where do I see my initiative? It's oh, up yeah. at the top next to armor class. Ah, plus two. So I got an 18. Okay. That's pretty good. Everybody got pretty good initiative except for Zoe. All right. Sorry. <laughs> Hey, I just threw up my scrambled eggs. It's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, it's okay for clerics to be last because they come in and heal everybody. There you go. Okay. I'm, I'm feeling pretty good about my breakfast. That was <laughs> All right. that was a real treat. You're feeling I'm smart. To oblige. Oh my god, yeah. Brain. Okay. It's pretty much just quiche, right? You guys never had brain quiche? Nope. <laughs> I've had uh, I've had sushi that had a big fish brain on on the on the uh, rice mm, parasites yeah so um i am a parasite all right so first we'll resolve what happened here with fiddler oh. on the roof no in in front of the porch <laughs> the fiddler on the porch in front of the porch okay so he got uh, he so he fired first 10 plus Four is 14 to hit against the um, captain. Oh, he missed. Crap. Okay. And then all three of them fired at him. Wow. He's like almost point blank range. He did a terrible job. <laughs> okay. So we've got uh one guy with a shotgun that's plus three to hit and i he missed and the other one with a pistol also missed so everybody uh oh and then yeah I, every oh except for and then also the one he's fired at the captain Loretta, um, and in and Laura, she's the same person that was arguing with with uh, with Boy R D earlier. Okay. So she's going to fire her weapon back at him. It's plus five. It's Fourteen. Jeez, everybody missed. <laughs> okay. All right, so um, the first person up is uh, Fiddler. So he's going to fire again. At the same uh, captain lady. Whoa, he missed. He got a natural two. Okay, and then Jonathan is next. All right, I will look at uh, Zoe and Ralph and um, I guess I'll have to use like real seagull voice if I want to conserve actions. Oh, yeah. So there's like squawk. I can check <laughs> it out. <laughs> OK, <laughs> and I'll say I'll check it out for you. And I will move up to the top of the roof. I assume I'm fairly 
inconspicuous. Yeah. Because just a seagull. Yeah. Oop, I have the wrong thing selected. My apologies. Hmm. Um, and then I will relay with Minor Illusion, which is range 60 feet, um, and I will just tell them, I guess I could roll a perception check. I'm having trouble moving my... Oh. Oh, okay, there you go. It's not okay. letting me move through buildings. Oh, really? Yeah, I'm special. Here we go. Well, okay. yeah, now you're on top of it. There we go. And we'll okay, up there. The roll perception check. Um, 13. To kind of get a lay of the land of what's going on and relay that back to Ralph and Zoe so they don't okay. have to break cover to know where yeah. everybody is. So you see three guys on the porch. One of them mm -hmm. has a shotgun, one has a pistol, and and the and the lady in the middle you recognize from that argument with mm -hmm. uh Boy RD. Uh and she has a um she has a a rifle. And uh it looks like even with all that gunfire, nobody hit each other. It's like that scene in Pulp Fiction. Yeah. <laughs> Man, I've seen enough weird stuff today. These guys have always been sort of trigger happy, but I'll okay. whisper back to, or in a whisper, I will have the voice say, my normal quote unquote speaking voice that's not my seagull speaking voice. Okay. Um, just describe all that to them and say, okay. it looks like um, your friend is in a little bit of trouble. Okay, and and uh, none of them none of them seem to look up at you. They're all still focused on on uh, fiddler. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, just a seagull that was disturbed by the. Mm -hmm. by and the, the guy gunfire. with the uh, the shotgun fires again at uh, fiddler, and we'll see how he does this time. Whoa, nineteen plus <laughs> three, so he hits. Finally, yeah. Finally, Fiddler's going to die. <laughs> Sorry, I thought I was <laughs> muted. <laughs> uh, so let's see here. Two D eight plus one. Okay. So twelve damage. Uh, Fiddler goes down. He, uh, on his way down, he goes, sons of bitches. And uh, he grabs the, the button out of his pocket and he pushes it. Uh-oh. Like the doomsday device? Yeah. Ouch. Okay. Uh, and nothing happens immediately from that. Well, and actually, you guys don't really know that he pushed it, except for Jonathan knows that he got something out of his pocket and pushed a button on it. I may remember. I was pretty intrigued by the idea of a doomsday device. Or no, I guess I wasn't there. I yeah. Was, you guys weren't talking about the graveyard. Yeah. And um, and another, so... Um, not you cigarettes, see a... is it? Go ahead. <laughs> oh, I said it's not cigarettes, is it? He didn't no. pull cigarettes out of his pocket. Oh, <laughs> no. Darn. So um, an, another guy uh, breaks the window from inside, and you see a guy with a shotgun looking around um, through the window, but he doesn't see anybody to shoot at right now. Okay, uh, Churdovir. Uh, so back downstairs in the um, in the basement. There we go. Uh, okay. Looking around, you see that uh, you you hear um, shuffling and you heard gunshots up upstairs. Mm -hmm. um, and there is a you you see the the bedrooms all around. One of them has a per poster of Kermit the Frog on the door, and there's a spiral staircase uh, going up and towards the back of the room. You hear shuffling and yelling, and there were gunshots. These people must worship frogs on this planet. <laughs> okay i'm going to move so each square is like how much five feet one two three four you can five. go diagonal too and you can go across the transport if you sure want 
okay so i i i'm walking towards the the okay. the little you know snail like uh yeah the 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 the, the ladder the staircase okay. yes yeah yeah oh it does kind of look like a shell uh -huh. <laughs> all yep. right um so I, I i did my 30 meters do i stop and give my turn uh yeah if the, i mean if unless if unless you there's anything else you want to do you don't see any enemies or anything going on here there's nobody here so you okay. move 30 yeah you can move another 30 as your action so you could probably oh, that's true you can make it to the stairs yeah okay start up. i made it i made it to the stairs thank you i yeah yeah, so when you, you typically you have your movement, you have your action, and you have your bonus action. And if you've got nothing you can do for your action, you can use that to do more movement, like Grant said. Right. So okay. I made it to the stairs. I'm going upstairs. Okay. Uh, and uh, next up is Ralph. Back outside again. There we go. All right. So Ralph, you, um, you Jonathan uh, relayed to you what was going on that there were three gunmen on the front porch, and you think you heard uh, you you heard it sounded like um, Fiddler got hit. And actually, from where you're standing, you could probably peek around the corner. So you, if you wanted, you could have seen that stuff ha happen. Yeah. So you heard, uh, and if you were peeking around the corner, you would have seen Fiddler took a hit from the shotgun and he went down. And he, um, if you want to, and if you want to do a perception check, you could see whether you saw him pushing the button. But oh, uh, uh, yeah, I'll do a perception check. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, Twenty-three. Wow. Yeah, you definitely saw that, um, <laughs> that he pushed the button. Okay. Um, so, yeah, you still have your movement, your action, and bonus actions if you want, if you um, whatever you want to do here. My action, my bonus actions, all that jazz. Yeah. I want to find out what that button was. Well, you know, um, you know that it's um, that, it, that uh, it's some kind of a device that's that's meant to sort of uh, scrub the the site if if you're ever discovered. Oh, okay. Um, but since you're not fiddler, was the leader, and so he knows more about what it does than you do. Mm. Okay, so I need to get my hands on this device. It sounds like then, right? <laughs> if if you want to, there are three gunmen right in front of it. There are three gunmen. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. So I think what I want to do is, uh, man, if I go up here by this bush, they'll see me. Hmm. And I can't go around. Dang. Okay. If you oh. you've got uh, you've got pretty good cover behind the garage there. If you you if you want, you could you could step out and attack somebody and step back. Okay. So how far can I throw things? Uh, you mean spells, or are you talking about like throwing stuff? Throwing objects. Uh, maybe thirty feet. No, that's not far enough. Okay, uh, let me see my spells. You also have a gun. I do have a gun. But I already used my gun. I'd be a basic bitch and use my gun. Okay. And you have, uh, you used up one bullet, uh, but you have, I think you have 10. Yeah, I, I just rolled a 16. Okay, um, so your attack on your uh, on your gun there, it, it'll add, there's a bonus for that where it says hit slash DC next to your, uh, you, I think you have a revolver, right? Uh, yes. Okay, so where it says revolver, you've got the range 40 feet and hit DC is plus what? The revolver, does it say... Uh... 
weapons and weapon attack and cantrips, right? And yeah, under actions. Under actions. Oh, it's a plus one, so I got okay. a seventeen. Okay, yeah, uh, seventeen hits. So roll your damage on a revolver. It looks like two d eight plus something. Two d. Say that again. Two d eight. So two eight sided dice. You just roll the eight sided die two times. Eight sided die. This one. This one. Okay. Roll the eight sided dice two times. Yep. Okay. I got a seven. And I got a seven. Okay. And plus what? 2d8 plus. What does it say on your damage? It says 2d6. Oh, is that a revolver? It says pistol. Oh, pistol. Okay. 2d6 plus what? Uh, plus one piercing. Okay, so you sorry you rolled uh, six sided dice then. Oh, um, I apologize. Uh, six sided dice. Oh, I got a four. I got two. Okay. Um, so, so what seven. does all that add up to if you add the bonus on the it's end? A, it's a seven. Okay, so seven damage to the you're you're shooting at the the that guy closest to you? Uh yeah, the one that's okay. closest to the pink shrubbery. Okay. Um and that is yeah, the the one with the pistol. Okay, so he took a he took a hit. In the eye. Yeah, no, no, he's holding his side. He goes, oh, damn it. There's freaks here. <laughs> <laughs> They're okay. Freak. Yeah. He said okay. pink shrubbery, so that's probably this one, right? right? What's that? No, the pink one. The, this, um, where's my mouse? This guy. Oh, okay. Oh. Yep. All right. So uh, it's the captain's turn. And so did you, so when you fired, you, you step, did you step out and then step back again? Yes. Cause you got the kind of the corner of the building in the way. Yeah. I, I, I okay. did that and then I came back. Sorry. Okay. So she is going to step over Fiddler. Let's see here. Oh, that's pretty close. And from here, I think she's got a straight line to Ralph or Yeah, so she's she's gonna shoot at Ralph. Oh, and she misses. Right. Okay. Uh, next up is Zoe. And Zoe, you just you saw this uh, you saw this captain just just step forward and you can see her from where you're standing and and uh, she just took a shot at at ralph but she missed luckily so if she's got a shot at him and i'm having a really bad time rolling today well also you might you could say that you used up all of your bad luck so <sighs> <laughs> Well, because see, I've, I've been sitting here while you guys were talking. I was sitting here thinking what should be the best course of action. Because like all of my uh, my numbers and everything, like with my pistol and stuff like that, I mean, it's okay, but not like exceptionally good. And I was also thinking about persuasion. Hmm. Um. I think diplomacy might be over. <laughs> yeah. Well, the thing is, I might be able to like mind meld, you know, like Spock yeah. or some shit. Yeah. Um, no, it's, it's good. Oh, I know what I'll do. I'll do protection from evil and good. I am I still within uh, touching? Yeah, I guess I am still within touching well, distance of him. Or that's, um, I think it doesn't that protect I? protect you from like fiends and devils and stuff. Uh, let me just double check here. Hang on. Yeah, magical creatures. 
Uh, yeah. Grants several benefits. Creatures of those types have disadvantage on attack rolls against the target. The target also can't be charmed, frightened, or possessed by them. Yeah. Um, so these people seem like just regular. Oh, well, they're they're regular just normal humans. people, so that's yeah. that doesn't apply to them. Gosh darn it. Okay. Um, hmm. Well, let me see. I was pretty good with guiding bolt before. <laughs> so <laughs> fingers crossed. Cause I can I can wipe out uh, you know. Okay. Yeah, that that was that's an well, awesome spell over here. Okay, so oh come on, baby. Don't give me a one. Do not give me a one. I hate <laughs> you. Seven plus okay. your spell attack bonus. So my spell attack is that is that no, it's that's it's written on the spell if you look at it it says plus something to yeah. hit. Uh, four d six damage, and then it says I don't see. Oh, we'll see if... oh here, come on. Uh, hmm. There's nothing that says like a. Okay, so is... we're going to your spells and guiding bolt. It's plus five. See where it says hit DC on your on the spell. Oh, that's what I'm looking at. Okay. okay. I well, I wasn't sure if that was the number I was supposed to be looking at. I was looking at the okay. description. Okay, so yeah, so seven plus five is twelve. Okay. Um, and which one were you you're firing at the one you can see, I guess. Yeah. Um, so and that one. She should be is, within six. Yeah, yeah, that missed. It missed. No, yeah. she she kind of <laughs> ducked to the side and it went over her shoulder. It oh, was close, it. but it missed. Oh gosh darn it! Yeah. Okay, so the one that took a hit, um, with the pistol on the corner here, he is. Uh, oh, I gotta switch my. Okay, here we go. He's gonna try to. Uh, Thirty. And he's going to take a shot at, well, let's see. He's going to take a shot at Zoe. Does uh, a 15 hit? Hey, what's your armor class? Armor class, armor class. My armor. Um, when I click on armor, it says cleric. Is that? Uh, it's the little shield right in the top middle of the screen. Oh, it says 14. a number in it. Okay. 14. So, yeah, he got a 15, so he hit you with his handgun. Okay, so. Okay, so seven damage. Is Chloe still upright? I mean, I mean, not Chloe, Zoe. <laughs> okay, don't confuse me. Am yeah. I still upright? Yeah, well, you took seven damage. Um, Looks like you have nine hit points. So you click um, on the hit points and put in seven damage. Well, I'm on the ground and I'm not happy about it. So let's yeah. put it that way. Okay. Damn. One of those damn just <laughs> two more weeks till retirement kind of things, you know? <laughs> yeah. Oh man. I have okay. nothing to help you, lady. So um, inside, somebody break. Uh, another guy moves over and looks out the window with his uh, with his pistol, but he doesn't see anybody to fire from inside. 
to fire there, at. There's another gunman inside the the building. I believe yeah, two yeah. More. You, well, you heard you heard gunshots yeah, from in the building, and you right. and you heard a window breaking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so um, that we're at the top of the second round, and uh, and uh, a rune appears in the middle of the field in front of the porch. Uh oh. A what appear? A, a big, uh, a big kind of glowing rune. Okay. And the the air starts to feel like it's uh, it's vibrating. Ooh, wow. And Musette, it is your turn. Okay, I am still in the basement. Yeah. There we go. Okay. So, gotta, I'm, so I'm, I'm still good. walking up the stairs? Yeah. Okay. I cannot see where the uh, little squares are. Like oh four. yeah, they are kind of tough to see because of the grid yes. pattern on the. But um, they they match up the the four. It's four little squares makes one. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And then since we're not investigating, I guess I just go again. One, two, three, four. Uh, there we go. Okay. okay. Yeah, and you you now end up right 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 behind sure, uh, okay. running up the stairs. Let's go. Okay. Uh, and then let's see here. Back out. Probably back outside. Uh, is Fiddler's turn? Oh no. Yeah. Oh. Fiddler bleeds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, okay. So. Yep, he's just lying there. So he's still alive, huh? Well, you're not sure. Okay. You, you in fact, you don't even know who he is, and you've never met him before. Right. Or you don't. Yeah. You haven't. Yeah. Okay. Um, Jonathan is next. All right, I'm gonna kind of hop squawk. Whoop! I gotta I'm move them. Collected incorrectly. Uh, up to here. Okay. And then, I mean, obviously, I'm looking like a disturbed seagull. That like I've been disturbed, not like I am disturbed. So yeah. both, both are accurate. <laughs> um, and kind of use that to maybe try to hide my uh, actual casting of a spell. And I'd like to cast minor illusion um, and make it look like there's you know a kind of a shadowy uh, form made of the inside, like without skin of um fiddler kind of extracts itself out of his body and stands up in kind of sort of zombie like okay apparition that looks like it like <laughs> forms out of his body is is there some kind of a, a a saving throw or check to to see through the illusion uh physical interaction with the image reveals it to oh, illusion. That's right. um a creature can use its action to examine the image and determine that's illusion with a successful intelligence investigation check against my spell save, which is 13. Does it make sounds? Uh, not yet. It's a silent okay. image at the moment. Okay. All right. So th this guy right here goes, oh, my God, what is that? He says, hey, help me. What is that? Uh, these two don't see it because they're, they're not facing mm -hmm. that way, but. And that would be my turn. Okay. And I'd mutter under my breath in my seagull voice, freaks. They call <laughs> them freaks. There's only certain contexts I like to be called freaks. I'll show them <laughs> freaks. And then, yeah, the okay. shadow being extracts itself from his corpse. And I'm All right. Um, so this guy. Hey, Rob, is there like maybe a zombie token that we can put on there? Did we lose Rob? Uh, yeah, just a second. Oh, there you are. Okay. Might take me a minute. Yeah. 
guess I should warn you before game session so you're not. <laughs> <laughs> I should remember how Brant likes zombies. <laughs> but, it, it, but I wanted it to more look like uh, in um, Hellraiser, you know, guy without oh, skin, like, like only kind of yeah, only kind of shadowy with like whiffs of shadowy smoke bleeding off him instead of blood. But obviously, be fiddler and kind of go through the motions of extracting itself out of his body, mm. like he's sweating it out. Hey, hey, um, okay. And it rises in kind of yeah. a cloud of black smoke and coalesces. Let's see here. Fiendish form. Rob, how do I draw a line? Ugh. Okay. <laughs> That's pretty good. Oh, there he is. How? Um... Yeah. Yeah, that's quite. Okay, so Brant, where is that? Where he's standing? Uh, directly on top of uh, Fiddler Square. Okay, because yeah. it looks okay. like he came out of him. How do it's I draw a line like Fiddler. you guys were doing before? Uh, that's a measure, like how the distance line. Yeah. You do the little circle with ruler coming out of it fourth tool okay. down okay yeah that one. okay I'm, I'm trying to measure from the shotgun guy uh to see if it's if when he shoots at this thing if he's going to hit his friend that was yeah. kind of the plan <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay well how, how did you do that that arrow again uh third fourth tool down it's a circle with like a ruler coming out of it copy that oh okay and you just drag. Okay. So he is going to fire at that thing. Um, Jonathan is a strategizing seagull. So you gotta be when you're little and have no thumbs. Right. <laughs> I mean, I, if I had fingers, I'd use a gun, but <laughs> not really an option. So I gotta. You could summon a magic hand to hold a gun. Does, does the does the thing try to dodge or anything when it's being fired at? Um, I mean, I, I'd like no. Nah, it's just kind of screaming and trying to look scary and threatening. Okay, I can't really control it that well on until my turn. So he got a ten. So I I'm guessing he probably would have missed, but we'll see if he also hits his friend. No, he missed both of them. Okay. And uh, inside the um, the the oh actually yeah the, the there's a guy inside with a shotgun fires also at the through the window fall, fires at that creature. <laughs> How is Fiddler reacting to all this? Uh, he is unconscious. Okay. <laughs> okay, Churdovir's turn. Okay. Let's go back to the map, waiting for it to change. Any time now. Are they in at the which floor are they on? Now? Oh yeah, can you do put the they, they they made it up to the top of the stairs, so we'll put them in the in the main okay. main floor of the cabin. Whoa, damn. Jeez. Oh, okay. So There's um, two gunmen in there. All right. Whole mess of dead bodies. So they're they're standing with their backs towards me, right? Uh, they are, yeah. And you see, you see three dead bodies. Two of them uh, are one human. Uh, one looks like a um, one looks like a cat person, and one looks like a, a frog person. Okay. So I turn to Musette and say, "Shh, hang on." And I'm going to cast magic missile at okay. um, at the guy closest to me. Okay. Like the one, you know. And magic missile, you don't need to roll to hit. That hits automatically, so you just roll damage. Nice. Okay, so uh, six for damage. How do I do this? It's uh, it's it's uh, the D four, mm -hmm. and I think and you get three missiles with that. So you roll that three times, and I think it's plus pyramid. one on each one. Yep. So the little pyramid one. Yeah. And so my first roll is two, and then you add one, so that'd be three. Plus three. Mm -hmm. So second roll is on the floor. Hang on. <laughs> Let me roll that again. 
Second roll is one, so uh, that's two. Okay. And third roll is three, so that's four. So what's the total of all the damage? So you said three plus two plus four. <laughs> nine. Okay. Wow. He Yeah, he takes nine damage. Um, nice. Yeah. So Good that's... Limo. And that is... Okay, that would be the pistol one. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yep, there we go. Blood splashing everywhere. There we go. Nine, nine, you said seven damage? Nine. Nine, okay. Okay, so he's hurt really badly. All of a sudden, he, all these, these magical darts just kind of fly through the air and, and hit him in the back, and he was not prepared for that. Another so he kind of goes down to his knees and goes, ah! Good. All right. Uh, Ralph's turn. Sorry, ah. Rob. I know you have to keep on switching the maps. <laughs> this is a complicated battle. Okay. Okay. I, I got I, one guy. I will uh, scooch this back over so we can see Ralph. Okay. <laughs> so that red dot means that guy, that's the guy I shot earlier, right? Yeah. Okay. I would like to do... Uh, Eldritch Blast. Okay. All right. Um, and roll to hit. 16. Okay. Um, and that that included your bonus? Oh, my bonus? Sorry. It did not. 20. Okay. Yeah, that totally hits. Where cool. is that one? There are too many people with guns in here. There we go. 20. Okay. So roll the damage. It's a D10, right? Uh, yes, D10. And uh, so that's kind of the rounded looking um, one that has a zero on it. Okay. I think that's not that one. Looks like that. Sorry. I'll hold it. Yes. Uh, that one. Yep. That one? Uh, yeah, that's it. Okay, cool. All right, uh, I just roll it once? Yep. Okay. And I don't remember if there's any bonus for damage on Eldritch Blast. No, there's not. So it's just a D10. Yeah. Yes. Invocation you can take later. Right. Okay. Right. Highly six. recommend. Okay. So the captain takes six damage from an Eldritch Blast. She goes, ah. Okay. And it is her turn. Hmm. I'm looking. Um. So. Huh. So she heard all this screaming behind her. And uh, gunfire, and a bullet whizzed past her head. So yeah, I'm thinking she's going to turn around. Yeah. <sighs> And she sees this thing, and she's going to fire at it. <laughs> of course. Yeah. And uh, Let's shoot at the tornado. <laughs> yeah. No, no. She sees the, the, the skinless creature. So she's going to fire at that. And uh, I'm sure that that hits. Well, I mean. Yeah. And she, I think she also hits her friend because she got a pretty high roll. <laughs> yeah, that's a 19 to hit. So if the bullet goes through this thing. So does it disappear if, uh, if a bullet goes through it? No, it's just obvious that a bullet went through it. And so that's when they make their, like, they okay. interacted with it physically. And they're like, wait, <laughs> this is an illusion. Okay. Yeah. So she hits her friend and... Uh, 2d8 plus 3. 7 damage to him. And that one is... That's shotgun, I think. Yeah, he hasn't been hit before. He takes 7 damage. He's hurt. 
I just do my combat by proxy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, now it's Zoe's turn. Okay, so let me say. I've been debating a couple of things here. So I can move and then do a spell. Is that right? You you can do it in either order. Because I'm thinking about moving Zoe up four. Okay. And then have her, having her take out our little friend here at the bottom of the bush. Okay. Careful, this is a family show. <laughs> I didn't say whose bush. <laughs> this is from a seagull who likes to get freaky. I know, yeah. right? <laughs> Uh, turn. All right, come on, turn, people. Turn, turn. Hopefully, I'm over my bad luck streak, so I am going to do Guiding Bolt. Okay, on the, the one that's hurt? Well, on the one that's hurt, heck yeah. Okay. Take okay, them while they're down, baby. Roll, roll to hit. <laughs> and that's on the six-sided die, correct? Uh, rolling to hit is on the 20-sided die. Oh, okay. Plus your uh, attack Oh, yeah. That. 14. Yes. 14 plus. 14 plus. Back up here. Where am I looking at here? So you're on the spell. I'm on the spell. I'm, it says 4d6 damage. It's plus five, I think, right? Guiding bolt. Yeah. Hit DC uh, yeah, is plus, plus five. five. Okay, so All 19. Right. Yeah, that, that definitely hits. Woo-hoo! Okay, Yay. roll your damage. And that's also on the 20, correct? Uh, no, the damage is uh, 46. Okay, so that's right? the six. Okay. Wow. Five. So five plus five. Is that correct? It, it, you roll a d6 four times. Oh, four times. Okay. Yeah. Five, four, one. Come on, give me a good one. Five. Okay, so what's the total of that? 14, 15. Okay. 15 damage. Wow. Yay. You go, Zoe. Yeah. Dead yet. That's for shooting me. <laughs> yeah. Okay. She is hurt really badly. And and she's glowing. So the next person that attacks her gets uh, advantage on the attack roll. Okay. So who's next? Okay, uh, and then next up we have Pistol Guy, which is, I'm not sure, I'm uh, trying to remember which, that, okay, that's this one here. It's going to fire at, uh, well, let's see, there's a lot going on. He's going to fire at Zoe. Don't you do it. Better think twice. Oh, boy. Okay, I, Zoe got hit. Oh, uh, man. Yen? Who, who is Zoe? Uh, the, this, this guy. Uh, I'm sorry. This one here with the pistol. I'm trying to. The one above the bush, on top of the bush? Yeah, yeah. that one. Yep. Figures. Okay, so 1d10 plus 1. Uh, so 9 damage. Oh, man, I'm dead. So Zoe is down. What? Like, down, down? <laughs> not yeah, dead. Yeah, I only have two left. Yeah, not I dead. I gave just, you my just all. Unconscious. <laughs> okay. Damn. Okay, so back inside of the cabin. Sure, over here to the rescue. Yeah, th- so this is the guy that uh, that got hit by Chertovir in the back. Yeah, he is going to turn around because he just got he just took a bunch of damage in the back, so he wants to see what's going on. Oops, the daisy. And he's going to. Go here and fire at Chertovir. 
Oh no. <laughs> so he got uh, 16 to hit. I think that hits, right? What's your armor class? My armor class is 12. Yeah, okay. So he he definitely hit. Oh, took it on the shoulder. I don't know if there's localized. So he he uh, he got nine nine damage. He got me nine damage. Yeah. Ah, oh, Jesus. Okay. Hang are on. you unconscious or are you still up? Hang on. Uh, damage. I got seven hit points left. Okay, so you're unconscious. Wait, you have seven hit points. Oh yeah, that's right. You know, you're level yeah. two now. Yeah, I'm level two, baby. That, that saved your life. Okay. Okay. I uh, so can I move? No, it's not your turn. Okay. Is it use that? Okay. And at the start of the next round, um, we have uh, so we're back outside again. Did I not? Did I? I don't have a turn. Not, I don't uh, you you will yeah actually okay. but just just as at the top of this round um the air starts to turn pink and it looks like the whole area is speeding through what musette and uh, chur will recognize as the in, in oval so it looks like um the you the buildings and stuff are still there and all the ground um but uh it's kind of been the whole place in sort of a cube has been is transporting through the Innovo. That's not good. Yeah. And let's see here. And Ralph, um, make a perception check. Okay, nice. Uh, with my bonus is 20. 20. Wow. Yeah. So with the 20, Ralph, um, and your, your microphone is, is maybe off or I don't know. Sorry. Okay. okay that's better. So you see, uh, Ralph, with your perception check, of, uh, you see off in this distance, uh, a sort of a pinkish translucent looking creature with a flat head, uh, galloping mm -hmm. towards the, uh, towards the, 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 the ground that you're on. So you see sort of a, uh, a wasteland of pink sand and purple sky and that, that uh, this whole area seems to be sort of moving through and you see this creature galloping towards the, towards you. Damn. It's about the size of a tiger. It has a flat head and, uh, and huge claws and it's semi-transparent. Semi-transparent. Yeah. Hmm. That's I a lot no to see, this, you, yeah, in this short amount of time. But I, I don't, I don't think this guy. Is, we, I don't know if this guy is coming to attack me. Do I? Uh, you, well, he's galloping towards the towards the whole the whole your whole uh, area there. He, yeah. He's not necessarily towards you specifically, but okay. you're the only one that would be able to see him right now. Oh snap! Well, All actually, right. Jonathan would uh, possibly also be able to see him. I forget about him. He's just a little bird up there. Okay, no. so. <laughs> So yeah, Grant, can you make a perception check also for for JL? And I think you're muted. Things are getting super pink. It's like an acid flashback. <laughs> yeah. Lisa Frank. So so My apologies, Brent, that was eleven. Oh okay. In my yeah. So you 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 didn't didn't notice that, but you're seeing a lot of crazy stuff going around mm -hmm. you. Okay, so um, back oh, to looking through the trash in San Francisco. So, Rob, sorry to make you keep switching <laughs> maps all the time. <laughs> uh, so, back to inside of the cabin, and it's Musette's turn. All There's right. sort of a pink hue in the air, uh, glowing in through the windows, which you kind of recognize as as uh, being the wasteland of the Innovo. Uh, this guy just fired at Chertovir. And uh, hit him pretty bad. Yeah. Okay. So at this point, um, should I mean, like, should I use healing word to uh, help Trudovir? I, I guess I could do whatever I want, right? I think healing does healing word. Um, 
Uh, yeah, actually, that one you can do at a distance, I think, right? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. My is on the other side of the room. Healing Word does, uh, and Cure Wounds does a little more healing than Healing Word does, but okay. Healing Word you can do at a distance. Okay. Well, I don't have Cure Wounds listed on my... All I have is that, that uh, Healing Oh, word. okay. Yeah, yeah. You can do Healing Word on him. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and do that. Okay. And is that, uh, I think that's 1d4 plus something for the healing. Um, it says instantaneous. Okay, it says page reference. Okay, here, 250. Wow. Oh. Jesus, these pages are thick. What the flip flap? Okay. <laughs> Did you say what the flip flap? Yes. <laughs> okay it says the range is 60 feet okay um and then it says 1d4 plus your spell casting ability modifier yeah yeah so oh, and then it says when you cast a spell using a spell slot of second level or higher the healing increases 1d4 for each slot level above first yeah um so four so okay. 1d4 plus spell casting yeah ability wait spell cast oh is it the attack bonus it's a spell attack bonus i bonus. think or, okay, or, well spell casting modifier so it'll it'll say on on your dnd beyond thing okay so two plus six plus four is six total. okay so so sure you take uh six six points of healing you got uh you got backwards attacked And if you want to move into the room, Musette, you can. Um, you could probably you could squeeze by Chertovir, or you can stay where you're at. Nah, I'll stay behind him. I just okay. help. <laughs> okay. So, so Jose, did you do your healing? Um. So, how many points did I get? I'm sorry. Six. 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 Okay, six and heal. Boink. I'm back to thirteen. All right. Yes. I'm back to 13. So uh, is it my turn? Uh, let's see here. I got so many tabs open now. Okay, here we go. Uh, it is Fiddler's turn. Okay. That's This will be quick. Thanks, Musette. <laughs> Woo. Okay. All right. And next is Jonathan. All right. Well, uh, I think I'm going to double down on the illusion, and this time from the top here, use keeping concentration on um, the wraith, you know, kind of uh, flailing about trying to horror movie wise. Mm -hmm. I'm also going to project minor illusion, you know, as loud as I possibly can with the spell in Fiddler's voice or what I remember it um, as kind of a callback from earlier, and just say so you. SOBs are going to have to do better than that and um, <laughs> okay. kind of originate in, in kind of like a, a voice that sounds like his, but sort of watery, like it's coming from beyond the grave. Okay, cool. It's centered around right there. See <laughs> okay. if I can distract the rest of them. Okay. And then I will move one, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, to there. Because I'm a, a fast seagull, so I'm just going to okay. fly over to the edge of the other roof. Kind okay. Of the other e. And I am done. Okay. So shotgun guy heard all that. <clears throat> uh, he is going to, let's see here. I got the, oops, there we go. He's going to back up one space and fire at the illusion again. Uh, and nine plus something plus three. Yeah. yeah so, something else. yeah. And then he's going to make it. And then another. Oh, he got a better attack roll for hitting his friend, though. <laughs> 13 plus. Uh, there we go. Three. 
16. So that hits the captain. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the shotgun is 2d8 plus one. So the captain goes down. Huzzah! Yeah. Okay. So Brant, that's not that so that illusion didn't doesn't break your concentration then. The 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 audible one. You're muted. I was prompted. No, it does not. It's a it takes me two turns to set up changes, but I can do sound effects while I'm concentrating on the illusion. I just can't move it. Okay. Or change it at all. Okay, so inside. Um, we've got the other shotgun guy. Okay. And uh, he, let's see here. There's a lot. He's, he's seeing a lot of stuff going down. Yeah. Okay, he's going to turn around. He's going to fire at Chertovir. Again? Man, yeah. <laughs> I can't move. I would have jumped out of the way by now. Yeah, that, well, your armor class is part of that. So it's yeah. like your ability to dodge and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he, let's see here. 14 to hit. Okay, I am for uh, 12 armor class, so I guess okay. he hit me. Yeah. Dang oh it. Oh, boy. How many points? Um, or I could cast mage armor 10. if I could. Uh, 10 Holy. points. Holy, <clears throat> 10 points? You, you do have, you do have uh, there are spells, some spells that are reactions. Okay, uh, I guess mage armor is a is uh, that that's buff. not that one's not a reaction though but okay no shield would be if you had shield yeah i have no i do not i have mage armor no i don't i have blade ward but that is, is that is that that one's not a reaction though i don't think no it's one it. action yeah it's one action okay so 10 damage i'm down to three okay oh it is, is now shirt over here's turn oh at three points, can I do anything other than like drool on the floor? Oh yeah, yeah. You, you, you. As long as you're conscious, you can do stuff. Okay, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm hiding behind this table here in chairs. Okay. 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 Does and, that uh, give me a chance to do anything else? Yeah, you can still attack. Awesome. Um, let's see. Do I have? Do I have a direct line of sight to this guy? I guess I yeah. kind of do. Yeah, and you're using the table as as cover. Right. So let's see. Um, since it's kind of smashed, it would be half cover. Since I already used that spell slot, I have two more spell slots available. I think I'll try for the Ray of Frost. Okay. Which is a cantrip. Um, and I, I attack the guy who um, is by the bodies there. He's there, but looks like 35 feet away. Yeah. That should, I think Ray of Frost can go like 60 or something. Uh, What's yeah, the range on me, that? Let me check. The range on this? Oh, I, or is, is it that one or the 60 one? feet. Oh, okay. Yeah. Ray yeah. of Frost so you, is 60 you, feet. You're going to attack the, um, the other one. Yeah. Not the guy who's got the little red spot, the other guy. Okay. Because now he has a direct line of sight to me. Okay. Got it. Okay. Uh, yep. Yeah, roll to hit. Okay. So that would be a 20. Yeah. Okay. I've got a 20. Right. Natural 20. Yep. Natural okay. 20. Okay. And uh, roll, I, uh, roll your damage and, and then uh, double the whole thing. Well, my damage. Is that a six? Wait. No. Uh, 1d8. So that's a critical hit. 1d8. Hang on. Where's my eight? Side of die. Here it is. Okay, I've rolled a five. 
Uh, let's see, five natural five. Is there any uh, bonus? Is there, is there any uh, uh, damage bonus to that, or is it just one d eight total? So it's a sixty feet hit DC plus five effect one d eight. Okay, and you rolled a five, so you I do 10, 10 damage to that guy. Really, awesome. Because yeah. I'm second second level. Uh, well, it, because you got a critical hit, so it did double damage. Ah, hey, awesome! So I hit him with ten points, right? Yeah. Nice. So that one, uh, he he's reeling. There's like ice in his in his face coming out of yeah. his nose. Yeah. He's stuck there. Um, Turn him into a fish stick. Yeah. He's still he's still up, but he's hurt really badly. Kablamo. Okay. I Rob, I hit the other guy, not that one. The other guy. The the, the one guy that's by, by the bodies. The, by the bodies. Yeah. 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 Okay, Ralph is next. Yeah, there he is. He's got the blue little thing on it. Looking out for you, Musette. All right. It's Ralph's turn now. So, we got this <laughs> one guy. Hanging up by the bush. Yep, you've got uh, Zoe is is unconscious on the ground. How many spaces can I move? Uh, what does it say? Let's see. It's um, each space is five feet, and your movement is what is it? Thirty. Thirty. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So um, you know what. I just want to go one, one, five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty. Um, yeah. I'm gonna go up here. Okay. So and you I'll... do you do see like a howling and screeching uh, creature with with um, its skin missing? Yeah. I do. Okay. Uh, right there. I yeah. see him. So you want it, but and you're you're if you do this, you're getting closer to it. Yes. And you don't know that this is an illusion. Oh, you're, the player knows, but the character doesn't know that. Correct. Okay. All right. So what are you gonna do? I'm gonna take my sickle to this guy with a gun. Okay. Right to his face. Okay. Uh, roll to hit. <laughs> Ten. Uh, plus what? Uh, plus three, so 13. Okay. All right. And I think, let's see here. That is the pistol one. 13 this hits. Yeah. Uh, roll damage with your sickle. Okay. Uh, sorry. 10 plus. Uh, which one do I use for damage again? I'm sorry. Uh, it'll say on your sickle on under oh, actions. 4D or 1D4. So my four sided die. Okay. Um, right? My four sided die? Uh, I'm pulling. I, Yeah, well, it's, it's 1D4 plus one, it looks like. So is it this yep. one? Yep, that's the one. Okay, so. Okay, now what? Plus one. Plus one. Um, well, there's three numbers on each side, and it landed. It's the one whatever that's the upright. Is. Yeah. Whatever, whatever the top is. The, yeah, the one that's the yeah the, the one, one that's, that's upright. The top of the pyramid. Oh, I see. It's a uh, three plus three, or three plus one. Yeah. So you have four. So okay. Four. And Sorry. that that uh, takes him out. Sweet. He is down. He's out. Oh, yeah, I kicked his ass. Okay. Uh, and then it is Zoe's turn. So uh, roll a 20 sided die. Okay. Wish me luck. Yeah. Good luck. What'd you hey, get? Jesus. 19. Okay. Yeah. So in the. Uh, Am I back in the, in the game now? 
<laughs> no, in, in the death saves, you mark that as a as a uh, pass. Okay. So you got to get three passes or three three passes and you're alive and three failures and you're dead. Okay. Yeah, so that's a pass. And in, okay. and if somebody heals you before then, then you're back up again. Okay. All right. So um, that, that's Zoe. Okay, and that guy's dead. The house, man. Okay, back in the house. Yes. The guy with the pistol. Okay. The guy on the top. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's hurt pretty badly. He's a, there's a lot of screaming going on outside, and he's getting shot at inside. Quick question. Uh, mm -hmm. When I use a cantrip, do I have to mark another spell slot as red? No, cantrips you can use as many times as you want, and they don't, they don't will. use okay. yeah, they don't use spell slots. Gotcha. Okay, so he uh, is going to run outside to see what's going on out there. Actually, the door is over. Rob, that's the door down at the bottom, right? I guess yes. he could also jump through the window. <laughs> Why not hurt himself matter? a little more? Yeah. Okay, let's see. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. He, so he brought himself outside. Coward. And um, I'm so sorry, Rob. Can we move back to that? <laughs> back to the outside one again <laughs> and put him there. <clears throat> Your face is looking so purple, Ryan. Oh, is it? Yeah, because oh. of like the screen. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Look like your uh, your grimace. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> or you went to Willy Wonka's factory and I, you, then uh, I want to be the evil six armed grimace. Yeah. Okay. Man, that so, would be quite the mess to step out to. Just like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So he he steps out there and there's this glowing rune. Um and uh, and a horrible evil creature there. <laughs> And I think honestly, that rune is is uh, rising up in the air on a pillar. So he's not going to see Ralph. He just sees the creature. So he's going to fire at it. Oops. Uh, and he he missed. Okay. And then let's see. Okay, on the uh, on the next round. The, the creature that uh, that Ralph saw uh, charging towards the uh, the towards the group managed to scramble up onto the into the area so it's now in the uh, in the area up near the top by the trucks cool. but that was its turn and and uh, Ralph, you're the only one that can see it. It has a, a flat head like a hammerhead shark. It has uh, transparent skin, so you can kind of see its organs. And it has huge claws and teeth. OK, and um, that was the turn. Mute. Sorry. <laughs> oh, OK, and, and now it's Musette's turn. OK. <clears throat> So there's only uh, there's one guy left in the cabin with you and he is hurt right. really badly. Right. Yeah, I was gonna shoot at him. Okay. Uh let's see. Is he within a range? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, okay. I think that's probably fine. I think the okay. gun can shoot uh 40 feet. If the if you have a handgun, right? I think that's 40 feet. Ooh, I have a pistol, an automatic okay. pistol is what it says. Yeah. Yeah, so he's only 20 feet away, it looks like, so you're good. Okay. Okay, so I do <clears throat> roll to hit, correct? Yep. yep. Oh, shit. Damn it. I got a five. Um, okay. Okay, so plus four is nine. Yeah, that missed. Yeah. Okay. 
And next oh, shoot. is real fast though. I did want to uh, go ahead and um, do my cantrip because this seems to be getting pretty out of hand. Well, the, uh, the gun takes an action. Is this a cantrip that's a bonus action? Uh, I have no idea. It says okay. at will. Okay. I can just do it the next. I'll just do it on my next one. At the uh, well, let's see which one you're doing. Uh, just blade ward, but I can do it as my on my next. Okay. Turn. Does, does it turn. say as an action? It just says at will, blade ward bard. Uh, time. Okay. Range effect notes. Uh, I'll I'll look it up and then I'll figure it out. Here, for the I'll... next around. I don't want to slow everything down. Sorry. No, it's fine. We can. Oh, that's a cantrip. <laughs> yeah, it says time is one A on there, so that means one action. Oh, okay. So that's what that yeah. means. Yeah. So there are things that use bonus actions, and you can do those in addition to your actions and stuff. Uh -huh. Like if it says one B A, like healing word was a bonus action. Actually, you still had an action from before. When you did when you healed Chertovir, you could have done an action also. Oh. Okay. If you want to do that now, you can. We can just give it to you. Um, I can do it at the beginning of okay. my next one. This is only one round. Yeah. Okay. All right. Jonathan Livingston Seagull. In the flesh ish. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so I will. Do I have control of? No, I do not. I'm going to use my action to move the, uh, I guess, abomination kind of right here. So it'll it'll go forward and kind of crawl. It's silent, but crawl as it crawls over the railing to the deck. Um, instead okay. of like crawling with its arms, it grows new arms to grab and the old ones kind of like subsume into the body. Yeah. So it's kind of a rising mass of, mass of flesh. <laughs> okay. You can move that will just kind of, yeah, I guess climb okay. up to kind of threaten that guy. <clears throat> he goes, ah! And, You're a messed uh, up seagull. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like something out of Princess Mononoke, you know, the like it oh yeah arms yeah grow out of the shoulders and grab and pull itself along and then Jonathan will move let me measure fifty okay okay and then I will move to maybe whoop oh, I'm stuck I could ply don't Make me stuck, and I will fly over here. And Zoe can either hope that I'm going to try to help her or start scavenging. <laughs> okay. Um, and that is my turn. Okay. And when you get over there, you do see this creature. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I'll do the like the surprised seagull dip out of the way real quick, <laughs> and then land. But land wow. anyway. Okay. I think she's got some special peanut butter in that jar. <laughs> yeah. So the uh, the uh, the guy with the shotgun sees your illusion, and he trips and falls down the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he he trips and fell. So he kind of wasted his turn that in that way. Okay. And inside, uh, back inside the cabin, or no. There's nobody left. Oh, there is one. Yeah, there's one shotgun guy left inside of there. He was hurt really badly. For now. Yeah. So he just got fired at by Musette. So he's going to shoot back. Pew, pew. Yeah. So 13. Does a 13 hit? What's your armor class? 14. Oh, he missed. Blam! Yeah, 14. So he hit the wall over here, but he and he missed you. Okay. Just barely. Uh, and now is Chertovir's turn. All right. I am going to cast um, magic magic. Oh, wait. I can't do magic missile again. Uh, but, but, well, you can do it twice if you have more spell slots. 
Oh, okay. I, yeah, you I do can have guess, two. You can use them for the same spell over and over again if you nice. want. Nice. Let's do magic missile again. I am casting okay. magic missile. So you get three missiles with that, and mm -hmm. this guy is hurt really badly. So if you want the other two to go somewhere else, you can. Uh, from Although I don't know if there's any other targets. Able. Yeah, I wouldn't be able to hit the guy outside because it would go to the wall. Yeah, because um, you, you can't really see him. I can always fire at music. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm just joking. I'm <laughs> joking. I'm joking. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to uh, 1d4 three times. That is three plus one, that's four, right? Yeah, if uh, I move this off of the screen, then I don't turn pink anymore. White. Uh, Check it out. One plus one, that's two, that, that's six. <laughs> and I got another one plus one, that's two, that's eight. I got eight damage. Yeah, you killed him. Yeah! I killed him. All I right. Like, Take that, you ab Zordorexian dog. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever they are. Okay, uh, and next is Ralph's turn. Oh, if you can move, too, if you want to. There's no more threats in there, so... Sorry, Rob. <laughs> Man, who would have thought three human guys would... Five human guys would cause so much trouble. Yeah, they have guns. Yeah. And at this point, I would imagine you could see the abomination through the window, right? Yes. Yeah, you can. You see a, a, a horrible, skinless, like uh, undead looking creature heading towards the window. Yeah, about like right there. Yeah. Okay, so yes, I would like to move. I'm going to move. Uh, and like we were saying, you you, uh, you you do see the horrible abomination through the window, the, the skinless undead creature. Mm. Well, and to you, it seems most likely that this is a thing that came in from the Innovo because you see the, the, the pink glow of the Innovo sky. Okay. So I'm seeing it through the window. I moved over here in front of this okay. couch. So I have a comfy spot if I get hit okay. by something. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, and I, I, I look at the uh, a pink glow outside and I, and I turned to Musette and said, they must have summoned some, something from the Innovo. Um, and I guess I can try. Uh, my reaction would be um, to try to hit that thing through the window. Um, well, but you you've already used your you've already used your action to to fire magic missiles, right? So I moved over there and I I told Musette I think they've summoned something from the Innovo. Okay, yeah. All right. And uh, sorry. So now back to uh, Ralph. So there is sort of a drooling, slavering creature in front of you. Okay. And the seagull, uh, Jonathan, uh, just landed behind you and in front of Zoe. Sweet. And there's one uh, one gunman just came out through the door, and I it's I don't know. You might have heard the door close, but you can't really see him because of the the pillar. All right, I don't know what this uh, beastly thing is doing. Yeah, it, it it's kind of looking around right now. Looking looks like it's it, it looks like it's looking for something to attack. Uh, okay. I think I want to. Come over here. I think okay. I want to shoot at this guy. Um, okay. The one that's right next. Yeah, the one that's closest to me. Okay. Um, yes. Yeah, and 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 it looks like you can barely make that uh, getting around the the pillar there. So yeah, well, you know what? I, you, you can shoot at him. Uh, do I want to shoot at him? No, I want to do an Eldritch blast. Okay. Eldritch yeah, roll, blast. Roll the hit. Um, twenty sided dice. Sorry, I keep asking. Yeah, that's right. Okay. okay. Um, my technique. Okay, here we go. Fourteen. Uh, fourteen hits. Sweet. Okay, well, roll your I'm damage sorry. on a d10. Hold on. 
wait a minute. Um, that should have been a 14 plus a four. So it'd be 18. Oh, okay. Sorry. That hits even more. <laughs> and then my D10. Yeah. Which is this one? Yes. Uh, yeah. I roll. I roll this one once or twice. Uh, one time. I think you only have at level one. You just have one Eldritch Blast. But it, yeah. Okay. All right. I got a nine. Wow. Okay. Yeah. You you took him out. You killed him. Sweet. I kill that guy. Okay. All right. Um. Next up is Zoe. Uh, may, roll a 20-sided die. Need to make a pass. 17! All right, that's another pass. Yay. Need one more. All right. So is Jonathan's on the ground, right? Looks like yes. it. Okay. Are you trying to peck the brains off of that creature? Oh, wait, no. Who's that? Never mind. That's Zoe, okay. so you better hold on. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry I called you a creature, Zoe. That's okay. He's That's just guarding time. you. He's guarding That's your first body. Time. So yeah. the creature runs up. Well, well, actually, let's see. Okay. It's uh, it runs up to Jonathan. Oh no! And uh, tries to tries to to uh, bite at him. Chomp, chomp. Well, chompy, chompy. Oh wow! Natural one. Whew. So you He's you kind of dodge out of the way and it, <clears throat> it gets a mouthful of dirt, and then it's gonna take a swipe at you with its claw. Well, actually, with a natural one now, he's too distracted by by getting a mouthful of dirt to attack anymore. <laughs> he messed up pretty bad. That's lucky for Zoe. <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, I, I rolled to see if he would just go try to eat Zoe. But he didn't. Okay. Uh, uh -oh. And yeah, this one. This guy doesn't know what he's doing. Ooh. Yeah. So next is the uh, the guy with the pistol who fell down the stairs. Um, he gets up and tries to make a run for it. <laughs> yeah. I probably would too. <laughs> he used half his movement, and so he just kind of runs. He runs until he sees that there's a big, like, uh, twelve foot cliff where there wasn't one before. Hmm. Basically, this the, there's a cube. The, this this whole thing is being transported on a, the cube, a giant cube of dirt. And he, if he jumps off, he's going to end up in you know in the Innovo. And it's and it's a uh, twelve foot down, so he doesn't know what to do. He's going to go. He's making his way into the trees and he's going to go try to hide in one of the cars. Okay. Ralph wants to know if it's a horny tiger. <laughs> Ralph wants to know that? Yeah, yes. is this that horny... This is that horny uh, animal that girl kept having sex with in the tree, right? I... D I <laughs> I don't. I don't know what. What? He's he's talking about the story in tonight again. Yeah. Oh no no it's not. <laughs> That's what I've been thinking this whole time. Oh, but okay. yeah, this I mean, guy is just horny. That's it's got like is. it's got like pinkish translucent skin. It has a hammerhead shark looking head. Yeah, it's from Imagica. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. So. That creature was cool though. Yeah. <laughs> and it talked. Horny tiger. Okay. Um, so we're at the, at the top of the next round. Uh, the you've managed to make it through the Innovo, uh, and and you appear. Uh, the sky's not pink anymore. 
and the rune uh the rune is still up but it's uh there's no magic emanating from it now it's it's uh it's just kind of sitting there dormant and um musette is still inside the cabin but you do see that the the pink uh pink glow is gone okay and uh musette what do you want to do okay so i would like to uh inside the cabin i'd like to move closer to the window so i can okay. see what's going on oh here All we right. go okay yeah because we're not in any immediate day well at least inside the cabin we aren't uh okay. one well two three four that's good enough i should be able to see through the window Mm -hmm. So in the window, you see a, a horrible, skinless, undead-looking, howling creature. Well, actually, it's not howling. The... It's not making any noise. But okay. It's... No, it's totally silent right now. Yeah. But is that the only thing I can see? Is he blocking the view of everything else outside? Or uh, no? You, well, you can see outside. You can see the grass and uh, and some bodies on the ground. Okay. Let's see. I think from that point of view. I uh, you make a perception check. We'll see if you can see the the creature. Ah! <laughs> I think I got all of Zoe's bad luck. <laughs> oh no. Uh perception Uh hold on. Do I, do I uh plus 2 uh 6 total. Oh, okay. Yeah, you you're <laughs> you're distracted by this undead looking creature. That seems to have, uh, like, uh, that Sure had said probably came in from the Innovo. Okay. Sure looks like it. Okay. Um, uh, so what else do you want to, anything else you want to do? You said you were going to do Blade Ward? Um, I think that's only if I go outside. I would okay. put that back on because there's obviously something going on outside. But also, why would I go outside and join that? if I'm somewhat safe inside. Right. Well, I would rather just stay inside. <laughs> yeah, well, except that yeah. you are supposed to be helping the uh, squad. Uh, your mission was to help squad 43. Of course, for all you know, they might all be dead in the cabin but, right here. Right, but I, but I, we didn't, we haven't met them yet. And I don't, yeah. I mean, we don't have no idea what they look like or anything, right. correct? No, like, no, we you don't. No clue because like they, they missed their time, their meeting Yeah, time. you just know that there are three dead bodies in here. Plus right. another We're one from that, that you guys killed, yeah. Okay. And and one bad guy ran out the door. Um. Does Musette have a gun? Yes, it. Do. He does. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, I look at you and I'm like, hey, uh, you, you got a gun? I don't know what to do. I just like ugh. this is terrible. This is a terrible game for a person as indecisive as I am. <laughs> um, I am so sorry, y'all. Um, okay, so hmm. I think what I'm going to do is uh, am I allowed to move again? Yeah. Oh well, okay. wait, how much did you move already? Uh, I moved four spaces. Okay. So I can so then you move two more. Twenty feet. Yeah, so you can yeah. go 10 more feet. Oops. Hold on. One, two. I don't know if I'm close enough to um, identify what's going on with these people. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, make a perception check. 19. Uh, wow. Sorry, plus two, 21. Okay, yeah. So they um, they've been shot. They, they all have bullet holes in them. Looks like execution style. Um, they are shot in the head. Okay. They are unarmed also. It looks like they're probably caught unawares. Okay. Oh, well, this identify doesn't do anything really anyway, unless it's an object and that doesn't do anything for people. Right. It's like for figuring so, out what a, what a magic item is kind of thing. Oh, okay. So that's kind of pointless. Um, 
you know what? I just am I allowed to say my turn is over? Yeah. <laughs> okay, I, my turn is over. Okay, no, that's good. I feel good. like I am seriously uh, delaying gameplay like an insane amount. No, that's fine. Okay, so Fiddler's turn. Why does he keep getting turns? Uh, <laughs> I guess I don't need to know. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and then next is um, Jonathan. So I um, the my flock of seagulls ability um does that take like concentration would i have to break concentration on oh. the illusion it does not say uh it's it's done by yelling right yeah hmm. i would say no no i don't think so i think you can keep that up that thing up if you okay want. Um, although i don't know who you're doing it for anymore but yeah, I was going to say, where, where are the enemies? They're all... Well, I don't know. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know. Yeah. I don't want the spell slot to end yet in case I need it. Well, and, and there <laughs> is one Jonathan. There is one guy left that yeah. kind of ran away from it. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we have one guy. We have one guy still uh, ready to kill us. That's looks like he just he's just hiding from your illusion. No, oh, he's up there, yeah. right? He's up there yeah. in the, yeah. the, the tree or whatever. So, what I would like to do is I'd, I want to start rising in the air and kind of backing off and making a really, you know, just being that the okay. seagull mob, you know, and start uh, squeaking and squawking and saying in seagull that there's food over here and everybody come. And um, Okay. Are you able to get out without uh, an attack of opportunity? Well, that was my next uh, no. <laughs> um, okay. But, He's going to take a swipe at you with his claw or, or bite at you. Dodge as a reaction. Okay. Because now I'm flying. So he will need to take disadvantage. And I'm just trying to distract him away from Zoe's corpse. Or okay. Wow. <laughs> You're lucky it's disadvantage. Okay. So a six plus, he got 11 to hit with his bite. That is I'm a assuming miss. That's missed. Okay. And then I'm going to roll a D4 plus one for how many rounds until the swarm of seagulls happens. So one, okay. two. Two in two rounds, the swarm of seagulls is coming. All right. Um, so in, the... oh, in two rounds, okay. Yeah. Okay. Good deal. And so I'm just trying to just keep it distracted. Okay. And that is my turn. All so right. The monster. And it is now this guy's turn. He's going to go use this truck as cover. And let's see here. He's going to fire at the creature. Because he, he, I mean, he's not going to shoot at a seagull, so. <laughs> yeah. Okay, it's so. A, it's a really just, annoying seagull. Yeah. As opposed to a not annoying seagull. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, and um, let's see here. Turtovir's turn. Back inside of the cabin. All right. Let's go back. I am. Okay, so uh, I'm going to move. Oh, I'm trying to move it on the, the screen that you're sharing. That's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, not smart. That's one, two, three. I'm going to see if there's anything I can do to help any of these people. Okay. Oh, no, I thought you so, said they've been like shot, they're like dead in execution the head. style. Yeah, oh, but okay. you, you just saw that. But if you didn't tell him, then, you know, it, oh. yeah. Okay. It looks so like what? they were killed execution style. Okay. All right. <laughs> Okay. Um, so I'm gonna go outside. One. So yeah, knowing that you don't really two, have to investigate. Three. I moved over here. I'm approaching the door, so I moved six spaces, and I, I want to move okay. outside and see what's going on because I can still hear shots. And you okay, know, yeah, you can use your action to move the rest of the way. So, so uh, that'd be another thirty feet. Okay. 
Okay. I'm outside. All right. Um, so let's get that last guy. <laughs> so outside, yeah, you see, um, you see, you appear to be. Oh yeah, you've got this pillar right in your face. Um, it's not lit up or anything, but and the pink glow is gone. But outside, you see grass. You see a couple of vehicles. Uh, there's a, a a gunman, mm -hmm. like similar to the ones that you saw inside, who is uh, taking shots at what appears to be a gecka uh okay. from from the Innovo. Right. And he's standing in the back of the pickup truck. Okay, so is this a deck that I'm on? Is this a uh, yeah, yeah? Deck? It's like a it's like a porch. Oh, okay, gotcha. Well, uh, like that thing doesn't seem to be doing anything. That's just standing there, and I'm I'm probably getting suspicious that that's just an illusion. Um, but I think the gecka gek, I know what they are, and I'm more worried about that. Um, but I still have a pillar in front of me, right? Do I see the gecka gek? Uh. Yeah, because you because it's been kind of jumping around it and it was uh taking swipes at Jonathan well at the at a seagull. Right, you, right. You don't know him, I guess. Did, did okay. you did you I you remembered your dream? Yes, I remember my dream. That's right. Yeah, so there was a seagull in your dream, which you know it's kind of like, okay, I guess it's a you this know. feels familiar familiar. Yeah. Okay. So um can I can I still have any action left? Uh, no, because you used your action to move. I mean, if okay. you have any, any bonus action spells, you can do that. Let's see. Bonus action spells. I don't think I have. Yeah. And you, uh, when you go into actions, there's like a little sub menu that's bonus actions. So you, it'll give you a little quick heads up on what are, what bonus actions you can do. Okay. There's not a lot. Usually there aren't very many things okay. you can do so as bonus actions. I'm done with my turn, right? Okay. Okay. And uh, Ralph, it is your turn. There is a yes. creature that's sort of uh, that uh, was taking swipes at Jonathan, but didn't hit him. And luckily, it seems to be uh, it seems to have ignored Zoe for now. Was Jonathan trying to attack it? Uh, Jonathan um, just got out of its way. Oh well, then I'm going to come up here. Okay. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, you know, Eldritch Blast this thing. Okay. You don't have to, you don't have to um, go up in its face to do that, though. Oh, well, I want to. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to show this guy what's up. All right. Uh, roll the hit. I'm sorry. That's just my character, man. He just wants to kill everything. Okay. 10 sided Brain dice. Shame. Okay, ten sided so, die. No, roll the hit first. Roll, the oh, ten roll sided die is for damage. Sorry, roll the hit. Yeah. So twenty sided die, plus your spell attack bonus. Uh, so plus four. Oh wow! Yeah, that hits. Twenty two. Plus nine. Oh, nine damage. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Yeah. So you you got a, a good square hit on the creature with the Eldritch Blast, and that was a good hit. But uh, it seems like this creature uh, can take a lot of punishment. Oh well, shit! I can't fight him. They didn't rest. Okay. Uh, Zoe is next. Okay. Roll twenty sided die again. You can do it. Eight. Eight. Okay, so Eight that's a failure. Time. Okay, two, two good, two good ones and a failure. You're good. Yeah. Uh, and next is the Gekagex turn, and it was uh, considering eating one of the bodies, but now somebody just got up right in its face and shot him. So he's going to attack uh, Frank. Frank. Ralph? It's going to attack Ralph. Ralph. Did I say Frank? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. And he missed with his bite. And with his claw, he did, he got a, let's see, that probably hits, uh, 20 to hit. Ooh. I 
Quietly. So you take seven damage from his uh, the Gekagex claw, Ralph. Yeah, I take seven damage. Yeah. Uh, don't I have? Like, isn't there a way I can like counterattack or something? No. Well, no. if you have reaction, any kind of reactions, you can do use those. But most, you, you, mostly, you don't. Yeah, let's so see what. Let's see what you got. Doesn't look like it. But you need to mark your damage on the D and D Beyond. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I just took what seven damage. Yep. Yeah, I was. A Shark tiger. <laughs> Horny tiger. This thing from a tiger shark. Tiger shark. <laughs> okay, so okay. D, D and D beyond. Where do I mark that on D and D beyond? You you click on your hit points, hit points, and it'll say like healing or damage, and you put it. You put seven in the damage. Okay, so this guy in the truck is taking another shot at the uh, Gekka Gek. And, wow, that is bad. So he missed again. <laughs> <clears throat> and um, so um, it's Musette's turn. Woo. Okay. I, sorry, uh, Rob, I am still in that place. Okay, so uh, I do want to go ahead. I, I want to move outside. Do okay. I have enough? I can do that. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'll be just shy. Okay. And with that, you still have uh, an action left. Right. Oh, okay. oh, I see. Yeah, so you're near, you're by the door. I'm not. I'm over here by the the people. I mean, if you move there, you'd be by the door. Oh, okay. Because if you can oh. go 30 feet, yeah, you can. Okay, by the door. Okay, yeah. so before I actually head out, though, I do want to go ahead and uh, do the Blade Ward. Okay. So you cast um, Blade Ward, which is, I think that uh, that, um, it would, a, that that increases your armor class, I think. I don't remember. Where did I put it? I can read it really quick here. I'm sorry. On your character sheet. It's on my, yeah. Okay. So okay. So it says you extend distance. your hand and trace a signal. <laughs> oh, yeah. Visual of warding. Okay. And then until the end of my next turn, I have resistance against bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing. Yeah. So that means, um, that means if they attack you, they, they, uh, you take half damage if you get hit with bullets and stuff. Okay. And that's till the end of my next turn. And that counts yeah. as my action, correct? Yes. Okay. But can I still move outside just to uh, save? No, because you are you could have used an action to do double movement, but you, oh. you uh, yeah, you did your action to cast a spell. So you're kind of right there. Okay. That's fine though, because then when I get yeah. outside, I will be protected. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. So, and then, and then it is, um, I believe, Jonathan's turn. All right. Um, okay. So I am going to, yeah, as I'm squawking and squealing and waiting for the rest. And I assume everybody's kind of starting to see seagulls show up and uh, just kind yeah. of in the general area, there's lots of seagulls coming, and I'm going to swap down. I guess I can't move on the map. So I you want... can summon uh, other seagulls? Yeah, once <laughs> yeah. per day, I can, like, create a mob of seagulls to, like, mob stuff. Yeah, okay. well, you you call them. Yeah. Come yeah, in. and, and they, they do come in. From <laughs> the jungles of Canada. Yeah. Okay. From the trash piles and snow dumps of Canada. Yeah. And I would like to move, um, I can't really do it because the map, she's at the edge of the map, but onto the square opposite her from okay. the game, not where oh, I am okay. now. Okay, I got you. And then I would try, would like to try to stabilize her. Okay. Um, what do you, know, what do you, with, do you... With a, you know, be, I don't know, grab a 
scrap of cloth and my beak could try to press it to her wounds and okay uh make a make a medicine check all right wish me luck nine so i do not okay yeah it doesn't work i'm trying (laughs) yeah (laughs) um that is my turn and next is uh churdovir's turn I think, yep, I'm still within 60 feet of my illusion, so it is still existent. Yeah, and despite you standing there with your back turning towards it, it doesn't seem to be approaching you or or doing anything. You're you're muted, by the way. I'm going to assume with my arcane knowledge that it's like someone must have summoned an illusion here. This is not doing anything. I can kind of see through it. And I'm like, it looks like that guy laying over there. Like what? I, you know, yeah. but the gecka gek, right? Uh, yeah. And do I, so I see the guy on top of the truck. truck. Yeah. All right. I'm going to use my last spell slot because the guy's got a gun and yeah. people have been shooting at other people. I'm going to cast magic missile at that okay. for on top of the truck. All right. Uh, roll your damage. Are guy. you going to do all three darts at him or are you going to do, he, he's hurt pretty badly. You, um, can do, you can divide them up too, if you want. Okay. Um, I might go two at him and one at the Gekka Gek. Okay. okay. Yep. Roll, roll your damage. All right. First damage three plus one. That's four. Second damage, one plus one, that's two. So that's six points at that guy. He's dead. Great. And now one point at the Gekka Gek, and I got two plus one, three. Okay, so three points to the Gekka Gek. Okay. Yeah, and I've used up all three slots of my spells. Okay, cool. All right. So, yeah, you took out the guy in the truck, and the Gekka Gek took a little bit of damage on its flank. And next is Ralph's turn. You're you're pretty quiet there. Does this count as me taking a short rest? Since other people had a turn? No, no, a short no. rest is like sitting down for an hour. Oh, okay. I understand. Yeah. Okay, well then um I guess I'll just do another eldritch blast on uh this animal. Okay. Uh roll to hit. Ten sided dice. Ah, shit. Two. Okay, yeah, that missed. Okay. And next is the Gekagex turn. Hmm. It's going to attack Ralph again. No, Ralphie! (laughs) Sorry, Ralph. I made it mad. I blame you, Jose. (laughs) Oh, thank you, Rob. I like the other goals coming in. That's fun. So, uh, <laughs> does a 15 hit? Great. Ralph? Dead. Yeah. Okay. 15 hits? You, you killed me. Uh, You're unconscious. I think well, I'm going to die. Wait, I haven't rolled the damage yet. Uh, it's awful. <laughs> the, the suspense of my death is killing me. Okay, on, so what? you take five damage from the bite, and it claws you also? Yikes. Jesus. So Fuck. you take uh, uh, nine damage from the from Oof. the claw. Oh, Lord. Well. Dead. <laughs> That's bad. So what are you? What is, are you uh, unconscious? Uh, well, I mean, how, many, how much damage was that? You just said? Uh, I think 13. I mean, I, uh, yeah, I only I can only take three more hits, hit points. Oh, okay. So yeah, you're unconscious. Oh. Okay. All right. Uh Musette's turn. Okay, sorry. We um I our child care place i didn't they had messed with their hours and i guess they didn't announce that they went back to normal hours so next time we play 
we won't have to be, uh, you know, wrangling a small human. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, so I am going to go outside. What is this ones? Oh, oh Rob put that on there because it, because to, to show your spell. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, your blade ward. Okay, so one, two, no, oh, LARP. Three, four, um, and then there's that big thing over here. Five, six. So I can't. Uh, am I in range of anything or in anyone? Uh, yeah. Let's let's put. Yeah, we'll have you back on the. So that's kind of where. Or yeah. I don't think you I kind am. of put yourself in front of the the horrible illusion thing there. Oh, okay. Question, Ryan, is this patio something we can just walk onto the grass or do we have to jump down or how? Uh, it's it? It, there's a railing in front of you and the okay. steps are up to the north there. Oh, I see. Got it. You could jump over the railing and it's not, I mean, it's only two steps up, so it's not very high. It's probably gotcha. like four feet. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's see. Oh, and everyone else is like passed out. Can I do a uh, bardic inspiration to help out uh, Trudevir? Yeah. And that's a bonus action, so that doesn't take up your turn. Nice. Thank you. Okay. So we'll do that. Do I need to do anything? It nope. just uh, uh, Yeah. So you're you're playing your. Uh, liar or singing. yeah my liar yeah and uh and and so when the next roll you do you can add a, i think is it a d6 yeah it says uh that you can hear you gains an inspiration die one d6 okay and so the then, next time uh the next time you do that you have uh even the next time you make a roll you can add a d6 to it okay it says um it says for other than yourself within 60 feet yeah so yeah. yeah, I guess that only helps Trude Revere because he's the only for uh, everyone else is like passed out and Jonathan is way yeah. far away. Yeah. yeah. Well, and 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 you don't so really know that the seagull is <laughs> Oh is yeah, a friend. yeah, cuz we haven't yeah. met yet. Yeah. We haven't met yet. Sorry. Yeah, okay. okay. So, so you, he's that's, inspired that's you the... that's just a bonus action so you can still do a regular action if you want. Um no, I don't think I need to. I mean, I I recognize the the um, skinless thing. Yeah. I mean, do You've I got need to, that, like, that thing? It seems to be just I sitting mean, in one place right. silently, and the uh, the oviate creature um, is uh, seems to be kind of tearing into people down in the grass there. Right. An yep, another I thing can't. that you notice that nobody else would have is that the uh, we, where you where this prop where this uh, this whole area has landed is familiar to you. Uh, you you're back in the fugue. Uh, there's a chain link fence all around this this area now, and there are soldiers rushing up, uh, and it, you even see your cousin uh, rushing up towards the uh, towards the battle. Through the fence, so they're going to have to they're going to have to unlock the fence and come in. So that might take a while. Okay. Okay. I am done. Okay. All right. And I'm imagining the soldiers are looking at all the seagulls. And I'm like, what the heck is going on over there? <laughs> yeah. So it's uh, Jonathan's turn. All right. Well, I am now transformed essentially into a flock of seagulls yeah because um and they came from so far away <laughs> and i'll fly i'll fly so far actually i'm not gonna fly very far at all um <laughs> unfortunately i think i'm gonna have to waste my first turn as a flock of seagulls trying to save zoe again okay she only gets one more chance okay 11. I think it's a All right. Is it right? Zoe's only had, she's had only had one failure, right? Th three rolls? Yeah. 
she's yeah, she's had, had two failure. successes and one failure, I think. Isn't that is right? It? Yeah. 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 Okay, so your flock of seagulls is is kind of distracting the creature and and you're also healing uh Zoe. Yeah, we're descending a flock of seagulls descends upon her body. Okay. Oh, no! She's not. <laughs> Okay, so Zoe is stable. Not what it so, looks like, I swear. <laughs> so you're you're um, with a success, right? She's she's stabilized, but still unconscious. Isn't that mm -hmm. right? Yeah. yeah. So you're not you're not uh, bleeding out or anything, and you don't have to make any more rolls, but you are still unconscious. Okay, and uh, next is Turtovir's turn. Okay. Uh, Wow. Yeah, um, what, what is going on over there? <laughs> okay, I'm going to move. Oh, wait, so I'm still at three, three hit points, right? So I'm pretty weak. Uh, yeah, but right now there's nobody threatening you. Um, right. The Gekka Gek doesn't can't shoot stuff or anything. Right. Um, I can try shooting a ray of frost cantrip at the Gekka Gek, try to slow okay. him down, try to make him like give him some damage and stuff. Okay. And remember, you do have the plus D6. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. So you can use the D6 on your attack roll. Nice. Okay. Because you feel inspired by her uh, liar playing. Bloop, 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 bloop. <laughs> yeah. That's the noise it makes. Just bloop, 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 bloop. <laughs> Bloop, 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 bloop. So I roll a 20 sided die and then add a six sided die to that. So I got a natural 17 plus six, that's uh 23. Oh, you rolled a six also? No, oh, wait. Oh, you got to roll that all as well. Uh, roll the six, yeah. So 17 plus four, that is 21. Yeah, that definitely hits. Okay, and now what do I do for let's see, Ray of Frost? So then then is you roll the yeah, Ray of Frost damage. Come on, come on, Ray of Frost. Ray of Frost, and I got a four. Okay, uh, four damage. Four, let's see. It's 1d8, right? Yeah, and, four. And I think that lowers his movement by four, doesn't it? Or by 10, I mean. Wait, it says hit plus five? So yeah. I rolled a four. Do I add five to it? No. It's... The hit plus five is, to, that's plus five to hit not the damage oh okay gotcha yeah. so i i did hit four then yeah okay so four damage okay how strong right. is that thing Jesus. and next is ralph's turn so make a uh make a um roll a 20-sided die and if you get a 10 or higher then it's a uh then it's a it's a success yes yes six six okay so that's a failure yeah. and uh, Zoe can't do anything right now. The Gekka Gek is surrounded by a flock of seagulls, and so he's going to bite at them. Uh, eight plus 13 to hit. You're, you're muted, I think, Brandt. You guys don't have to keep muting yourselves every when you're it's not your turn. It's okay if you don't. Okay. Um so yeah, that would be a hit. Okay. All right. Um and is it normal slashing damage? Uh it's piercing because this is a piercing. bite. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So uh nine damage to the flock. Ouch. I get some feathers were definitely ruffled. Okay, and uh, and he's going to claw at the flock. So eleven to hit. That is a miss. Okay. All right. And you just used all your friend seagulls as as a as a shield. Okay. Well, I guess yeah. Seagulls don't really make friends. Just... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, it's uh, it's Musette's turn, and also you see, um, you you see a bunch of the soldiers have run up to the fence, uh, but unfortunately you're twelve feet up, so they don't get they don't have a good clear shot at this uh, at this creature yet, and one of them's trying to unlock the gate. 
Are they coming in from the north of the map? Uh, actually, they're they're coming in from the west. Oh, okay. towards the like the Gekka Gek and and Zoe and stuff. Gotcha. This bush is it a big bush or tree or can I uh, like if I were to shoot at the Gekka Gek, would I? Can I shoot through it? Uh, you might want to step to the side a little bit to get a, a shot. Oh no! I mean, I'm not. I'm going to move from where I currently am because oh, okay. otherwise, I'd shoot uh, Chodavir, and I don't think that yeah. that's probably a good idea. Maybe not shoot him. <laughs> okay. Um, but I'm saying, like, even let's say if I move to the, because I'm going to have to move to my left. Uh, can okay. I shoot past these? Uh, well, the the flip is this thing called? Yeah. Oh, that it's guy. A, yeah. The, 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 it's it's a pill. Right now, it just looks like a pillar. Okay. And you can't see the top of it. Okay, so I can't. So I'd have to move completely around. I have to go, okay, one, two, three, four. Can okay. I can I so you, you hopped over the railing? Yes. Uh yeah, make a make an athlete or a, make an acrobatics check to hop over the railing. Okay. Without tripping and falling. Okay. What is that? A 20? Plus acrobatics. the acrobatics? Yeah. Okay. Oh shoot. Uh what is this? A nine? Uh plus four, 13 total. Okay. Uh, yeah, with a 13, you stumble a little, but you managed not to fall down. Okay. And then I do want to uh, shoot at the... Okay. With, with, with a gun? With the pistol, yeah. Okay. Yeah, roll the hit. Okay. 11... 14 total. Okay. Uh, 14... That is uh, that misses. Wow. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, Jonathan. All right. Well, I think um, now that Zoe's stabilized, Jonathan's just going to mob the, or Jonathan and company. Okay. We're just going to mob the uh, Gekka Gek. Okay. Oh, no. So I just got nine to hit. Uh, yeah, that misses. <laughs> so the swarm okay. is just a little too scared of the claws. Yeah. And then I believe once I turn to a swarm, I can no longer concentrate on the. Uh, oh, so that thing is gone. Space. So that thing's gone anyway. Okay. Yeah. All right, and uh, Chertovir, it's your turn. Right. Um, well, since, let's see. Let me look at the map. Okay. How do I move the map? Oh, there it is. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, I'm going to jump over the fence here. Okay. And uh, I'm going to... Yeah, and make it an acrobatics check for Chertovir. Okay, acrobatics check for Chertovir. Uh, roll a d20. I got a three. And then you add your plus acro two. That's okay. five. So you you tripped over the rail and kind of fell face first onto the ground. It didn't do any damage, but you're did. you're lying on the on the ground, so it'll take half your movement to get up. Okay, so I moved one. Uh, I was supposed to move six, so I guess I can just move another two spaces. Yeah. All right. I I was hoping to get close to the Gekka Gek and use my sword, but let's go one and two. I'm stepping over this dude's body, okay. and I'm over here. Okay. <laughs> we'll get there. All right. You still have an action, though, if I you want I still have an action? Yeah, Holy you can kind of see the thing through the bushes. Do you think a ray of frost would be able to hit it again? Let's see. All right. I'm going to cast ray of frost because I'm okay. too far to use I'll, my... I'll give it partial cover so its armor class will be a little higher. Okay. So, yeah, a uh, ray of frost, and I will do a 1d8. Okay. So you roll the, roll the hit first. Oh, roll the hit. Yes. Um, two. I guess I don't hit. Oh yeah, yeah, that misses. It kind of 
the ray of frost goes into the bushes and and uh, turns them to ice. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I turn it into um, iceberg lettuce. <laughs> Ralph, uh, make a make another death save. Okay. Um. You can do it. Ten. 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 Okay. Yeah, you uh, you passed. So that's a pass. Nice. All right, and uh, Zoe, you are still unconscious. Okay, and now it's the Gekagex turn. He, I mean, he's going to take some more swipes at the seagulls. So, 16 and 15. Do those both hit? Do 16 and 15 hit? Brant? Yes. Okay. So the bite is 12 damage from the bite. God. And the claw is uh, We're a terrible damage. squad. How much? 10 more? 10, yeah. So that was a 16 total that round? Yeah. Yes. Wow. Um, so <laughs> there are still a couple birds left, but <laughs> okay. exactly just like there's a big cloud of feathers and okay. bird parts and that that he's just tearing it to shreds. It's like okay. a cat, I assume. <laughs> yeah. Catching bird, bird brains. All right. Uh, now it's Musette's turn. And okay. and you you also see um, you also see that they they've uh, put ladders up and they're starting to climb the ladders to get up here. Okay. Oh, I I think I'm just gonna shoot again. Okay, roll to hit. Uh, fourteen total. Yeah, that missed. Oh. Really? Yeah, yeah. We're a terrible squad. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's Jonathan's oh turn. Wow, this is starting to go fast now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we, to, we, we don't have to jump rooms, and half of us are counting yeah. Oh man. Well, I guess you know because I'm swarmed, can't do much else. While well, I'm still a swarm, so I you're, will. Oh, you're gonna attack. Try one more time. No, I, I'm just going to kind of fly up in the air and try to um, mind dart it. So that's a DC 13 intelligence saving throw in its part. Uh, DC, okay, 13 intelligence? Yes, sir. All right. Okay. Wow. <laughs> I'm sorry to say, even though it has a really bad intelligence... Yeah, I rolled that really happens. high. So 17. Uh, yeah, that's my turn. Okay. A couple of seagulls mewling around. Yeah. Okay. And um, it is Chertovir's turn. Okay. So I got three hit points. Uh, I'm kind of cranky because I tripped over the darn fence <laughs> yeah. and I want to get rid of this thing. So I am going to move positions. I am going to, I'm going to move here and then here and then here. And I can see the Gekka Gek pretty much, uh, you know, he's kind of like swatting at the seagulls and whatever. I'm going to cast Ray of Frost again. Because I don't want to get too close to him to use my sword since I only okay. have three points. So let's do that. I'm going to roll for the hit. And okay. I got 14. Okay. Uh, that misses. Is that That's the total or is that what you rolled? 
that's what I rolled. Let's see. Well, you, you uh, gotta add the spell attack bonus. The to spell it. attack bonus. Uh, spell attack bonus is plus five, right? Yeah. So that's a nineteen. That's a hit. Okay, Ooh. great. And now let's grab the uh, a one d eight for yeah. damage. And I rolled an eight. Swear to okay. God, I did not touch it. It's right there. An All eight. right. Yeah. So it is hurt some more. Great. Awesome. Okay. And then uh, Ralph, make another saving throw or death How do save. We kill this thing. <laughs> Stop dying. I think that's step one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I rolled an eight. Okay. So that's oh, a fail. No! The hand is just like crushing you as you're laying on the ground. It's getting pretty freaking heavy. <laughs> this is I why I mute put... my microphone, Ryan, so you don't hear me curse. Okay. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah, Joey came out. I had to plug the headphones back in. Oh. A bit. <laughs> I haven't even seen him yet this morning. No. Oh. Oh my gosh. Uh, and yeah, River keeps coming over and saying, Are you guys done yet? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um four soldiers uh, come come in, they climb up the ladder and uh, fire at the Gekka Gek. Yes. And uh, they they do twenty eight damage to it, and so it is down. Two of them missed, but two of them hit. Okay. Yay! Yeah. yeah. Yay! Help! Yeah. <laughs> I hold my shoulder and whimper pathetically, and like finally. Yeah, and they're having trouble making out what's going on here. But uh, <laughs> Musette, your 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 cousin. Um, recognizes you and she says, Musette, what's happening here? Who are all these people? How did I don't you get, know. How did you get back here? We showed up here and uh, the other squad missed their appointment time. So uh, we traveled over here and then we were in the basement. We heard gunfire and just general... I don't know, ridiculousness, and made our way up here. And this is the scene. Nobody knows anything. Well, there, we we do have a fail safe, so this is the uh, this is obviously Squad Forty Three. They have a a fail safe to come here to the fugue if if they're ever compromised, just because the fugue is the most is the safest out of all of the out of all of the um, garrisons. So uh, it looks like there are lots of injured people here. Which ones do we help? All of them? <laughs> like help 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 that chick with the red hair. She Or the okay. lizard guy. I don't know. <laughs> I guess if there's any pause if we're out of turns, I'll just take well, my Well, if we go if we go out of turns then Ralph could die. Well, that I was going to say my first action out of turn was going to be to try to stabilize him again. Okay, yeah, uh, roll to do that. Okay. Medicine check. Yeah, I was going to ask <clears throat> if there was any way that we were supposed to know who is part of the team of the squad and who isn't. Uh, no, no, you actually, you don't, you don't really, I mean, other than from your dream, I mean, you kind of recognize Ralph <laughs> and Zoe. And, and, the, and you remember that there was a seagull. Well, there's like two seagulls because the remainder of the flock. <laughs> right. And I got a six, I got an eighteen to stabilize them. So I guess I'll go over and like okay. the moon's close, but then chase the other seagull off because it thinks we're starting to eat. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Ralph, you are yeah, stabilized. You're the, unconscious, but you're not dying anymore. Disperse the flock, and so I'm no longer yeah. a flock of seagulls. <laughs> Okay, so the uh, the soldiers, the four soldiers, start um, carrying uh, Zoe and and Ralph down the ladder, and they say, "Come with us." Wait, you're carrying Ralph down the ladder. 
You're carrying What's Ralph that? down the. You're carrying Ralph down the ladder. Yeah, the soldiers are. So with that giant rock on my back. Uh yeah, well it's more like a mummified hand. Oh okay. Yeah. Not made of stone. No. Oh, that must be real stinky. Yeah, well if if it was made of stone, I don't. I think you wouldn't. We would still be in the tomb. Yeah. Right. So um yeah they, they do you follow them? Is Fiddler alive? What's that? Is Fiddler alive? Oh yeah do do you do you tell them to gather up Fiddler? They don't know amongst all of these people they don't really know that well like who is a good guy and who's a bad guy. Fiddler is a humanoid, right? He's human. Yeah, he's human. So it's easy for us. You know, I mean, he also looks least, really similar to these, uh, to these sons of the free. Yeah, I mean, I don't know who he is. Yeah. So to me, he looks just like one of those guys. But the people who he came with might, rec might, you know, say something. I'm, I'm not really on his team, and I'm the only one left conscious. Um, okay. I guess. Well, like I don't really know. I do know uh, he started the fight, so I guess I'll go check on Fiddler. Okay. What is his status? He's breathing really yeah he's uh he seems to be stabilized um don't don't the soldiers know who belongs to the jericho squad uh they well they don't know everyone okay they know all the they know all the soldiers from the fugue I, I, I say, well, this guy here, he's still alive. Maybe we should take him and find out what he knows about, the, you know, he might be one of these uh, attackers. Okay. Well, I'm going to get kind of huffy and like squawk and try to defend him if they try to pick him up. Because I don't really know who any of these, what's going on here. Yeah, <laughs> okay. I don't know what squads or... There's just people all I know is just people shooting at each other and I see that yeah. all the time. <laughs> so so um the, the people from the, the, the soldiers from the uh from squad three in the in the fugue start trying to swat you away from the body and they go, Come on, come on, get off. All right, I'll get off and I'm gonna go start rifling through all these guys' pockets. <laughs> okay. All right. Specifically looking Your little for beak. Yeah, yeah. Like picking up wallets with your little beak. And yeah, pen. rifling through the wallets. I don't need cash. Not really wallets, just mostly. You don't have pockets. <laughs> You're looking for food? Yeah, snacks and okay. cigarettes. Gotcha. And anything okay. else of interest. Yeah, uh, make an investigation check. Maybe a cell phone. 18. Yeah, um, They well, they all have cell phones. Um, so, and, and, uh, one of them has, uh, th there is one of them that smokes that has cigarettes and the other, um, and you find, uh, you find some bullets and they all have their weapons that they dropped. That doesn't really interest me. Yeah. Um, I'll definitely with the mage hand, take a cigarette out and then light it with prestidigit prestidigitation. I can't do <laughs> okay. it. Okay. Prestidigitation. <laughs> Yeah. Press the digitation. Thank you. Uh, and then just kind of be casually holding it with the mage hand and smoking it as I'm poking around to do. Okay. Doing everything out. Are you are you doing that after the soldiers leave? Go down the ladder. Yeah, kind of during. I, okay. I would assume while they're carrying him down. Once I got yeah. chased off. And, and they're I also would... carrying Zoe down and uh, Fiddler. And I guess I'll kind of pile up the cell phones in the wallets in the middle there. Oh, okay. I can't really carry them, but I bet they're useful and and, uh, and they also grab the bodies of the um of the the dead sons of the free and start hauling them down the ladders as well chasing me off yeah i guess they're all made of snacks so i didn't really need to look in their pockets so. <laughs> they're made of snacks <laughs> <laughs> i guess i look at the seagull and i i i with my double pupiled eyes i look at it and it's like there's something about that bird it's not you know his kind of aura kind of glows a little bit. Well, um, and I'll look at him real fast. Go, Ryan, do we, we, I know that I can't remember. Did Trudovir and I, did we had the discussion about remembering, generally remembering the dream, right? Yes. Yeah, previous. you did. 
Um, so I don't know if we're, we, I guess we can go off of that again. Like, no. you yeah. know, I yeah. say to Chudavir, does this seem familiar? Yes, very familiar. And I, I, you know, I remember, you know, I remember some of these people, even though I don't know their names, but I remember them in the, in the dream that we had. And I knew that there was going to be some sort of battle that we did. And, and that bird was there, that seagull. Um, this is meaningful. This means something. Let's, let's bring the seagull with us. C come here, little bird. Do you want to come with us? Hey, and, and I, <laughs> what do you mean little bird? What are you looking at? <laughs> and I'll kind of hop back and like the, I don't really have lips, but I don't speak with my mouth. It's kind of like a, so I can understand what you're saying. Yeah, but it's an illusionary voice. And so I can okay. kind of change it on. I'm not good at accents in real life, but I will. So you're, you're answering back. What do you talk about, Willis? Pretty much. Yeah, I'll do exactly yeah. that. All right. Well, I, I, I go. Th there you go. He's talking. <laughs> so he's special. You know, come with us, Seagull. We would love to uh, have a chat with you. I generally don't go with strangers. Okay, um, that's fair. Just follow the car then. Follow after us. After that one time in San Francisco, right? and I'm still <laughs> seeing pink mist everywhere. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yep. And uh, I guess I'll ask, what is, what is happening here? What is going on? Who are you? Why, man, your eyes like, hey, and just kind of blink. And hey, buddy, your guess head. is as good as mine. I, I think some of these people might be from the Jericho Squad, but honestly, my brother was supposed to be a part of this. I. I just came along because I, I'm trying to help my brother. I want to find out more about what's going on and how these people can help me fight, find my brother because my brother was kidnapped. So I'm just, I'm just trying to figure out what's going on here too. So I'm going to go with these people and, and talk to them about how they can help me find my brother. Are you one of those freaks too? To me, you're the freak. What? <laughs> So um, Ralph and, and Zoe, they managed to uh, to revive you. So you you're you're up. You've got one hit point, and you're conscious. So we we were, we don't have. Do we still have to roll for a pass or failure? No. Uh. -uh. Oh, no. Nope. Okay. You're 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 awake. You're conscious. You have one hit point. Um. You're you're beat up and in you're in bad shape, but uh, you don't have to roll that stuff anymore. Did did we lose um Lori? No, I'm here. Oh, okay. Yeah, your your window disappeared there for a second. No, oh, I don't know why. Okay. I've been here. Okay. I've been listening to you guys. Well, I'll stop sharing this. I think it just was only showing me the yeah. I don't know why. All right, I'll I'll look at Zoe and Ralph and be like, "Welcome back, freaks." <laughs> it's uh good of you to finally wake up from your nap. Can you uh, maybe tell me where am I and uh, what's going on here? <laughs> who are we talking to sorry we're talking to a bird yeah I, you know i kind of sneer at the bird i'm like okay dude you, you do you it's like, <laughs> can i have I a cigarette bird man <laughs> fair question what do you got he's asking oh. you for a cigarette yeah, uh, what does he have to trade? I mean, we just got transported uh, to a different dimension. This might be the only pack of cigarettes on this entire plane of existence. Like, I'm fair enough. I out. got a wooden stake I can give you. <laughs> I don't have pockets. Sorry. Damn. If I can't swallow it, I can't keep it unless I can carry it. You want my little centipede? All right. <laughs> you look. You look like you could need it. You need it, and I'll give him the end of the one I'm smoking. I'll just. I'll give take it. That's all I need. <laughs> You've done so much for me already. So, uh, Musette, your your cousin says, "Hey, I think uh, let's get all of you looked at and your wounds, and and uh, and we'll also want to debrief and find out what happened." Okay, and I'd love to know what happened. <laughs> yeah, I'm super nervous and just kind of sticking next to Zoe and Ralph because they're the only ones I know. And that that double pupiled guy doesn't give me a good good feeling. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the only guy who's been nice to you. <laughs> I called you a little bird and everything. <laughs> oh man! I even offered you my shoulder. He did not want to be called little bird. Yeah. 
You're one of the largest species kind of, of seabirds. I'm, I'm, I'm not a little bird. Yeah, he's a big bird. <laughs> Penguins are big. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, have we gone down the ladder? With, yeah, yeah. Um, and and okay. you start you start really walking through an open right. pasture in the fugue. Okay. You pass the orchard of Lemuel Low. You get to the um, and you get to the door of the house whose backyard is houses the fugue. And this house sort of serves as the uh, as the, the headquarters for Squad Three and and the, of uh, Jericho. And so you don't really know exactly how you got here, but that's your you're back. You know, after only one day in in these all of a sudden you're back in uh, Liverpool again. Nice. And so your your cousin and I'm sort of blanking on her name all of a sudden. No oh, wait, hold on, I have it written down. Um, uh, Aldrin. Oh, no, Atlantic right? goals. I hate Atlantic goals. Yeah, Aldrin. Uh, she says. So, how did you get back here? What's what's happened? I think you were supposed to be in these Ordrex, but you're uh, you're back here in the Fifth Dominion. Well, we were, and then Bentley, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, Bentley. Bentley. Yeah, Bentley. Uh, and we were waiting to meet up with uh, the other squad, mm -hmm. and the appointment time came, passed, and then we thought that maybe there's something wrong, and we traveled through to uh, the shenanigans y'all helped us <laughs> out with. <laughs> okay. And uh, and at this point, Fiddler is up and and uh, he's there and he says, "Yeah, I I pushed the button, I pushed the failsafe to bring us here." He said, "We we'd been compromised." Uh, can you tell me what's happened to the rest of our group? Squad forty three. I see Ralph and Zoe. What about the rest? What about Barclay? And. Uh, they got turned into snacks. Snacks? Unfortunately, they, I, I believe that they were shot. Execution I did hear, style. I did hear gunshots inside. Yeah. I'm sorry to hear that. To be honest with you, I think I want to be reassigned. I'm, I'm uh, awfully tired of the Midian detail. And no offense, I'm kind of tired of the rest of you guys. <laughs> Join the party. <laughs> so I'm going to use minor illusion to, or uh, yeah, the cantrip to well, he's kind of, I mean, he's kind of being a jerk to us. Yeah. And so while he's being a jerk, I will make the illusion of the head of the monster, like behind him where he can't see it, like mockingly talking. Oh, the, the gecka gek? No, the, the, undead version of him <laughs> okay. Oh, okay so behind him where he can't see it where he can't see it's like, just kind of mocking like yeah like this. <laughs> yeah okay <laughs> and i'm like there is something about that bird <laughs> yeah so um i guess the other soldiers would see that yeah everybody would see it yeah oh no i should think before i do things yeah uh, so yeah, they they all jump back and they yell "Whoa!" and they pull their guns out and start aiming them at uh, at Fiddler. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna make huh? it disappear and just act innocent. Okay. <laughs> they, so they say to Fiddler, "What was that?" And he says, "What what are you talking about?" If I could whistle, I'd be whistling. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's hard yeah, to I, when I you have a beak. Oh, yeah. I, I say that uh, that seems to have been just an illusion, guys. I think we're good like, man this man you guys are jumpy are you guys uh you said you're some part of some sort of squad huh what sort of Does anybody want mission? to care to explain why there's a talking bird so we were on our way to this cemetery thing and uh my uh, i cut it, it was like this little centipede cybernetic centipede that kind of caught my attention next to this thing he i thought he was kind of you know tweaking out so 
I cut him out of his misery and blast his brains out. And uh, I got Did stuck in a hole. The, the thing? Huh? You said you, you there was a thing that you and you blasted its brains out? No, no. There was just like this guy that was tweaking on the ground. I oh. think he was already dying. Oh, okay. So, um, and I got stuck in a hole. And when I came out of the hole, um, you know, I saw this bird making a brain and jelly sandwiches. <laughs> they look really, really confused. <laughs> That's oh, kind sounds of what like I, your brain's jelly. <laughs> 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 so he's been kind of tagging around, tagging along. Mm. And thank, thank God for that. <laughs> well, without, wanna... him, without him, Zoe and I would be gone, goners. So this this man that you shot is he was he one of these other uh, one of this other group that invaded uh, that invaded Squad Forty Three? Um, no, pipe he up, just looked like nice. I'll pipe up and say yes, absolutely. He was talking to uh, he was talking to that group before you guys got there, and uh, obviously you knew about this and were uh, defending yourself and. Um, <laughs> yeah. Wait, what? Who, who knew about what? <laughs> uh, there was a before uh, everybody everybody disturbed my brunch um, when I was in the graveyard in Midian. I did notice uh, there was a group of people, and one of the the majority of the group broke off, and they ended up being the ones that were uh, I don't know interacting with some sort of squad or safe house or whatever you guys have going on, and one remained behind and was bitten by a giant inedible surprise unfortunately centipede very very strange i say well you're welcome to stay here and rest up if you want and uh we can we'll talk to you about what you want to do next if you want uh, there is a mission that we have that you could help us with but if you're in a hurry to get back you can do that as well we'll send you to uh back to his order x well, I sort of year, we're still looking for your brother. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. I was like, I'm a little upset at this because it's like, listen, I'm not even supposed to be here. I was taken from my job at the Urethemec Arcanum, and my brother was supposed to take my place. But the whole point of this is that my brother was kidnapped by a Nulianak and some cultists, and um, we really need to to find a way to talk to the other Jerichos and see what was the mission that my brother was supposed to be involved with that caused him to get attacked and kidnapped? I'm really concerned about that. So I hope that you can put me in touch with people who know more about that. So squad 43 was supposed to aid you with this mission. I believe so. Yes. That's what Brentley told us. Yeah. Frankly. Yeah. So, uh, Barkley. And, and and so if you're, are you okay Was going that? going back with them? Uh, just talking to uh, to Ralph and Zoe. I'm totally fine. You know, let's do it. I'm good. Okay. Well, uh, you're you're the obviously your base of operations is is uh, shut down, and we don't know when we'll when we'll be able to to put together a new squad for Midian, or if. Uh, but for right now, um, we can send you all to Isordorex and and uh, fill kind of fill the roster for Squad Seventy Seven. And I, what about I'm you, sir? And he looks at the at the seagull. You're not uh, you're not a proper Jericho member, are you? I mean, you're you're strange, so you certainly fit the bill. <laughs> Was that a bird pun? And I want to look at him like no, you have a beak. Not, <laughs> you, have, you have a beak, not a bill. <laughs> Clock. Well, considering what I've seen, and you're still saying I'm the strange one after all, all the stuff I've seen, it has definitely piqued my curiosity. And uh, oh no, every everyone is strange. Seems to be a little more interesting than rooting through the dumps in Calgary. Though you you'd be surprised what you find there. I mean, if you guys have some time when <laughs> when we're on leave, I can. It's pretty neat. <laughs> I'll pass. But sure. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Count me in. Oh, yeah. Sign me up. I've never been a part of any human thing before. 
you would be useful as a aerial lookout in these situations. Uh, yeah, I would. I can be quite useful. I say, all right. Well, it's it's understandable if you if if you don't want to help out with uh, with our issue that we're having. Uh, it sounds like yours is also very pressing. So we'll send you we'll send you back as soon as you're well. And so if you if you want, you can take a long rest and sleep here at the. Uh, that at happens. the squad three house. Sure. Musette is very familiar with it. Well, she lived here for a week. Not super familiar, but more than the rest of you. Okay. Straight to the kitchen. <laughs> yeah. And I just say I am Chirovir and I am from the Eurythmic Arcanum. I am a wizard and I am glad to meet all you fine folks. So you are you from the second dominion where we sent Musette? I am. I'm from the Arithmic Kesperate. That's that's ah. been my home for the last 269 years. Well, oh my goodness. Okay. Well, um if you're ready, we can have breakfast first, or if you're ready, we can send you straight back. Take rest. Yeah. Okay. I'm I'm really hurt bad. I need medical okay. attention. I think Zoe and I are also still pretty beaten up. <laughs> Although if I'm able to get back to Bensley, yeah. we can sit down and watch movies. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Disney movies. He's got all yeah. the he's got the box of VHS. <laughs> yeah. So and actually just as you're thinking about that, you get a message uh in your mind from Bentley. He says, hey, Muzan, are you okay? What's happened? And you can reply. Uh, yeah, can reply Bentley, we're still trying to figure that out. <laughs> hey, but said, I think we have met the other people that missed their appointment. Uh, to their defense, though, they were in some very serious uh, shenanigans. Yeah. Are, are you and Cherdovir okay? Uh, we just need to get some rest. So, and you guys just see this as a one-sided conversation. It looks like Musette's talking to herself. Hmm. <laughs> I, I don't hear that, do I? You you only hear Musette's side. Okay. okay. Yeah. He says, so if you're okay and you need some rest, <clears throat> I'll be ready for you when you come back. Thank you. He says, hey, um, I have... Uh, I have a couple of movies. I have Stepmom and The Thomas Crown Affair. Thomas Crown Affair. <laughs> <laughs> the one with Pierce Brosnan or the- Yes, uh, yeah, the <laughs> Pierce Brosnan one. Yeah. It seems like there's definitely a certain vintage of videotapes that he has, mostly from the late 90s. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They're all grown up. <laughs> yeah. Like when when uh, when somebody bought a DVD player, they uh, they just dumped all their VHSs on on uh, Chertovir. <laughs> Not on Chertovir, on Bentley. on uh, Bentley. Sorry. There are some tapes at the uh, Erythemic Arcanum. That's true. <laughs> yeah. You have some bought from uh, uh, Godolphin's store. Anyway, I, I am still clutching my my shoulder, and I I go to get some medical attention. Yeah. Well, and after a night's rest, um, you're all healed because that's how Dungeons and Dragons works. Um, so you're feeling good. Uh, Fiddler does not want to join Squad 77. He's he's going to stay here and get himself reassigned. Relatable. Yeah. Um, during that evening, uh, before we go to sleep, or like uh, maybe a little bit after everybody else mm -hmm. is asleep, I just kind of want to poke around. It's like a farm right like an english manor house sort of thing yeah yeah and it has a back a backyard that opens up into the the world of the fugue okay um i'll kind of like i guess i'll start from the outside because it can start from the roof like look for windows into a room that there's no door to i don't know just poke around i'm a curious okay. little bird make an investigation check perception <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, I guess it depends on what you're trying. Are you, are you looking for anything specific? Or you just want to see no, what's I'm there? Like locked doors specifically. Okay, um, you, you want to see through locked doors? 
well, I don't want to see through them, but if I find oh, okay. a black one, I'm going to, I'm curious. Yeah. Well, and it's not a very big house and yeah. it's, it's laid out, um, when you wouldn't, your character wouldn't know, but it's, it's got, it also has a basement with a, with a, uh, transport on it. Um, I'm curious how a seagull would open a door. Watch. Well, he's looking through the plan. windows outside. <laughs> yeah. When I got the mage hand too, um, yeah, I just poking around for anything out of the ordinary, more yeah, out of the ordinary, or locked yeah, doors. Nothing really. I mean, you see a lot of crew, a lot of quarters for for a sleeping quarters and stuff. There are weapons. Um, um, there's anybody, a weird uh, magical uh, circle, teleportation circle in the downstairs. Um, are there any like orders laying out or packs of cigarettes? Okay, that would be an investigation check. Or, okay, no, nothing that you can find. <laughs> All right, now I'll just go to bed. Okay. All right. We've made it. Okay, so yeah, if you uh, if you step into the um, into the circle, there's a technician there. Uh, rear, um, and the tiles are actually already set from when they sent Musette over just a day ago. So, um, so it's ready to go as soon as you guys are. Um, they say we understand that it works better if you hold hands. I just kind of want to look at them oddly. You hold know, or if somebody wants to grab onto you or something, that might help. Hold my hand, little bird. And so, whoever whoever has the highest charisma oh, yeah, score. Yeah. Can can oh. roll with advantage uh, to oh. to make it through the shoot. Okay, wait. Sorry. Does that mean you need me? Probably. Mine's, mine's yeah. okay. I Mine got is where the flarp is. It? Uh, I, I, oh, what am I looking at? The plus number or the other number? <laughs> What's that sound? Uh, yeah, yeah e either one. Charisma. It says plus two, and then the little number underneath says fifteen. Oh, okay. So actually, Zoe's is a little higher. Wait. Zoe. Yeah. Or I yeah. So Zoe's gonna help. Yeah. What can I say? Okay, so Zoe, Zoe can roll. Uh, you can roll twice. Make a charisma uh, saving throw. And that's uh, twenty sided, right? Yeah. Okay. Roll twice. Okay. First so, yeah, one. So yeah. So and you add a plus five. Okay. First one is a sixteen. So. Okay. And the second one is a three. Okay, so 16 plus five is 21, right? So yeah. So you guys made it through with no problems. Um, no, uh, you're um, everybody that's never gone through the transport before make a charisma saving throw. It's gotten easier for Musette and True here. Okay, you're good. You right. you eat garbage, so um, going through a transdimensional portal doesn't seem to phase you or make you want to throw up. I got a strong strong stomach. <laughs> yeah. Do, are all of us rolling? Uh, no. Everyone. Well, you you actually, it's gotten easier for you. This is now your third time doing it, so it's not so bad anymore. It's not our first rodeo. Yeah. Uh, and and um, Ralph, roll to see if you Ralph. Charisma. <laughs> Uh, so that, that's yeah, a, a con constitution saving throw. And I think you're muted. I'll dig the okay. music. All right. So uh, do I spooky. do I change do I change? This is just for. Yeah, it's just, to, it's just to see if you throw up from going through the, the transport for the first I'm time. I'm sorry. Like, whatever we're doing, I got sidetracked a second ago, so I have, I'm sorry. Um, okay. Okay, so I rolled so, a 16. And okay, add and your add, your, add your constitution. Add my constitution plus yeah. two. Yeah. So. That's an 18. 18. Yeah, but so does this number take take over what's already on there? Uh, no. For the, rest, for the rest of the game, or? Uh, are you talking about your hit points? No, I'm talking about you're just rolling to see if you threw up 
from uh, yeah. trans going through the transport. You, you managed oh, to keep it down. Oh, so no, 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 no. Sorry. And, and Zoe, did you can you can you make a Constitution saving throw also? Because you um, have never done this either. You've always traveled by airplane so far. Okay. Nineteen. All right. So everybody's good. Uh, so you see a, a kind of a furry uh, Chewbacca looking guy with a round face and he pushes a bucket up to the group, but nobody needs it to, nobody needs it. So nobody throws up. He says, man, this is a pretty good group. I think we're going to be okay. Hi, Bentley. Welcome back. Yay, movie time. I'm, I'm sorry to hear that you had some trouble. Yeah. Do you want to watch Stepmom or a Thomas Crown Affair? <laughs> I'd rather read my book. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm going to go dig through the trash. Uh, whoa, who is this? You gotta, oh. he, he grabs a broom and starts swinging. It. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. A bird got through in here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll start. I'll just <laughs> play it up and squawk. And like, <laughs> do my best impression of Al Alfred Hitchcock Seagull. Okay. <laughs> he's Bentley. He's one of us. Oh, okay. He 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 missed with the broom anyway, and he he puts it down. He says, "Really? Yes." He says, "We have these birds here too in in uh, in his orderex, but they don't talk." There's something about that bird. <laughs> I just nod and say, "Yep." There's something about this bird. Yeah. He says, "Okay, are you uh, are you joining Jericho Squad seventy seven? I believe so. And I think the rest of you are on temporary temporarily joined with our with our team as well. I understand Squad. Uh, they they messaged me when you were coming over that Squad forty three is no more. Yes, they were um, attacked by um, some humans, and unfortunately, they were killed." So I think some of you don't know how the payroll works in uh, with Jericho Squad, but basically you can be. I'll I'll explain it to you because every two weeks you guys get a paycheck. You can have it. Uh, you can get it in cash, and for our purposes, we're going to say Great Britain pounds, uh, England um, or I mean, and can Canadian or U.S. dollars are all the same value because I don't want to do that conversion. <laughs> So if you when you get those, you can put them in as platinum because they're worth ten times what uh, what a these order X gold coin is worth. You mm -hmm. can have them deposited in a bank account if you have one of those on Earth, or you can just get it in cash. But you put when you have when you get that money, you put it in platinum, and 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 if you want to exchange it, you can then it'll go to gold pieces, which are what they're going to use in the in the Second Dominion. So I don't even have a wallet, let alone a yeah. bank account. Um, right, right. But you can you can st store it in your room in the in. in right, the, uh, do we need to make like a little satchel for him to fly around with, or will that throw him off his? <laughs> that no, might weigh him down. That might, need might much. mess him up. Yeah, I don't need much. I'm pretty self sufficient. I'm. Um... I'm I'm also not that interested in getting paid because I'm doing this for my brother and uh, I just you know <clears throat> he says well that's that's up to you and your brother for right now you'll still get paid can and I get paid in like worms <laughs> you know that's not a bad idea <laughs> get paid yeah. in worms I mean I could just snack on those while I'm out and about mm. that's way more valuable than money. <laughs> You can buy worms with money. <laughs> you can exchange money for goods and services. Yeah. See, this, this is why I've never trafficked with humans before. It's confusing and pointless. If I see something, I take it and I eat it. Like <laughs> maybe, maybe one of you would be willing to act as a money manager and I can just get my money deposited in that account. And if you guys, if I need pizza, you can just buy it for me. I nominate Zoe. <laughs> yeah, Wait, was... what? Zoe is the community banker. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, I'm obviously terrible with money. And, you know. 
sure. Fine, I'll, I'll stay in the back and carry a backpack. Yeah, and actually, Zoe <laughs> is the only one out of all of you that's from like regular Fifth Dominion Earth society. Mm. Yeah. Okay, I, I, I'll do it. I don't Yay. trust his or direct spanks, and I just keep my money in my <laughs> my mattress. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Me either. Uh, all right. He says, well, um, it will, I'll, you, you can rest again. So we'll, we'll do some investigating in the morning. Cool. Okay. Um, all right. On D and D beyond, do we do long rest? L long rest. Yeah. Copy that. Okay. Where do I do that? Where do I do the long rest? Uh, there is a long rest button. It's like a long, ah, uh, it's I got a moon that. shape on it. Thank you. And they'll much. ask you to confirm it. I have confirmed it. Yeah. And then you get all your spell slots back and your hit points go back up. And do we get experience points? You will, but I'll have it'll take me a little bit to calculate all that. So I'll okay, I'll okay. I'll send that to you guys in Messenger. Okay. Awesome. Oh yeah, Jose, did we send show you? That is oh, cool. Wow. That is very, very cool. Okay. Did you guys Oh well here's Joe's. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay. That's wow. You guys made a little book for that? That's great. Well, I mean, like, the artwork is really nice. And, oh, like, I actually is. want to frame them because, I mean, that girl went through a lot of effort to... Yeah, to they look great. Them. I mean, I think yes. they're... I'm actually quite flattered with, with how, how beautiful I think they all look. Like, I think mine's great. I've never had anyone make a, a draw a character for, for, <laughs> yeah. you know, for me. So I'm, like, yeah. very happy about this. Yeah, again... Asia Yordanova, that was the artist that we found on DeviantArt, and she was amazing. And uh, we found out because she had a drawing of uh, Apexamendios when he makes his body out of the city in the First Dominion. And Gentle is standing right next to him, and then we see this giant, you know, deformed creature. That was what really called us to Asia, and uh, she did a great job. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's great. I love it. I'm gonna frame. We're, we're, th we're thinking of uh, of putting together a T-shirt with the with the whole group, like a group photo kind of a thing. That'd be yeah. dope. Yeah. yeah, that'd be awesome. That'd be amazing. This has been fun. Thanks, guys, so, for joining us. So, can we share? Can we share our our, our uh, character pictures yet? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, All and right. actually, they they'll they'll show up in the intro video um, on here too. Okay. Sweet. Thank you, guys. Yeah, thank you. This was fun. Yeah, thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday, guys. Yeah. All righty. We'll see you all next I'll go, time. I'll go say hi to Brant in person. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> go say hi to your son. Out. Yeah. Was right, that a guys. seagull? Yeah. <laughs> Have a good night. Bye. Have a good night. Bye. Bye. Technical producer, Rob Danhauser. Score, Imagica, Cradle of Tersemet, by Ben Warren. Character design, Asya Yordanova. And Bird Ninja Art. Additional illustration by Richard Kirk, used with permission. You can find the show notes for this episode and join the discussion over at www.clivebarkercast.com. We've got an archive of past episodes, news, features, and reviews, along with all the ways you can connect with us. You can subscribe on every other place you can find podcasts. Share your thoughts with us and share our podcast with your friends. The Clive Barker Podcast, or BarkerCast, is an independent editorial podcast and news blog that's not affiliated with or under contract by Clive Barker or Seraphim Inc. This is a labor of love by the fans for the fans. Thanks for listening.